Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bark and Bin, a show about speedrunning games all under $20. I'm your host, Midnight Vesper, and if you're new here, well, here's how this works. From our current slash digital games, we'll be, using, we'll be using digital stores like Steam, GOG, Itch.io, Ubisoft, etc. to look at the list slash MSRP price. For our retro games, we use a wide assortment of video game pricing websites and look for the average loose price of the game. We do not count any sales or discounts as they vary from the time of purchase. Just a couple quick announcements. From now until July 15th, GDQ's revenues from subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits Cheered after taxes will be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders. And of course, as people in chat have been saying earlier, Summer Games Done Quick is four days away. It is coming up June 26th through July 3rd. Prize submissions are now open. Just go to gamesdonequick.com for more info. And of course, you can check out at Games Done Quick on our Instagram to get bite-sized highlights from our hotfix shows and events. Great stuff to check out there. But let's go ahead and talk about today's show. Today, we're going to be kind of combining Nicktoon Universes or Universe I with Nicktoons Unite. And we're gonna bring back some rock and roll with no straight roads. We got some cool, unique games here on this amazing bargain bin. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Jaxler, how are you doing today? I am doing really, really well. Um, a little uh, bewildered that we're getting to show this game off <laughs> on a GDQ stream. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll go ahead and kind of ex explain what y'all are about to see here. Um, this is Nicktoons Unite. We're playing this on uh, the Nintendo GameCube version. I'm Jaxler. I'll be running this for you folks uh, tonight. I also have a buddy of mine on the mic if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, um, so if you've never seen this game before, this is a... 3D uh, co-op beat-em-up game that a lot of people might remember, uh, uh, who had a lot of license games growing up, might remember playing this game or Battle for Volcano Island. This one's Nick Tunes Unite. Um, so what this category is, is New Game Plus, meaning that we're going to actually start the run on a completed file from the first level so that we can start out with upgrades and uh, power-ups. Uh, normally you get like new abilities for all four of the different Nick Tunes characters throughout the course of the game. Uh, but in New Game Plus, we start with all of them right off of the bat, except for one, which we'll mention uh, why we don't have that unlocked later. Um, but yeah, so we have all of those, and we have some of them upgraded as well. Uh, additionally, this is a solo run uh, of uh, one player, two controller. So I've actually got two Game Gear controllers in my lap, and so I'm going to be using both of these controllers uh, and some parts at the same time. Um, you might be wondering why that is necessary, um, but it's going to be very important once we actually uh, get into the run here. Um, but that being said, uh, time is going to start when we select the first level here, which is Ghost Zone Prison. So are we ready to get started? Yep, seems good. Okay. Time begins in three, two, one, go. All right, good luck. Thank you. Um, so we get a little bit of time here to chill. I'm going to immediately swap to Spongebob because uh, Spongebob is the character I'm going to want at the start here uh, when we get into the first level, which is uh, uh, the Ghost Zone prison. Um, but unfortunately, we uh, okay. yeah, we get cutscenes. Um, so unfortunately, yeah. the cutscenes in this game are unskippable. Uh, but the good news huh? is that they're very, very, very this funny. Um, this is probably the greatest cutscene you will ever hear. So yeah. just, just kind of take it no in, mistake. enjoy, I've taken <clears> enjoy Vlad's voice acting. <laughs> Vlad is probably one of my favorite villains ever, just because of his voice here. Finally make it. It's ridiculous. I've been waiting for you all to arrive. Sorry we were late, but now let's get the party started. I also, yeah. <laughs> Vlad, 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 like, steals the show in this cutscene. I, 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 like, I feel, like, weird trying not to, like, talk over it. Um, also, shout-outs to SpongeBob having, like, actually impeccable eyeliner as well. 
I don't, I don't know why his, his character model came out like that, but it just, it always makes also, me giggle. Also, big shout outs to the gaping holes in the ghost portal right behind Vlad. Yeah. It's just like not even completely filled in. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of interesting too. I discovered this recently. If uh, This room where this cutscene is happening is actually located out of bounds in the ghost zone prison. If you know where to uh, wrap around to. And, oh, really? Yeah. Um, but you can't like do anything in here. Uh, super useful. There's some collision lying around. But all right. Uh, do you want to, uh, Drunkle, would you mind explaining the object displacement glitch while I get it set up here with SpongeBob? <clears throat> Yeah, sure. Okay, so the main reason why we're doing New Game Plus here, uh, the main reason why it's so big is because of the early items that you can get, so you don't have to like go through different levels to get them. The big one, as you can see here, is the Bubble Bomb. So what you're going to see here is um, a, an out-of-bounds clip, and the way this works is <clears throat> when a character is holding an item and they enter a loading zone or they get hit, uh, like during that, well, not really get hit. If they like enter a loading zone, or in this case, if the bubble bomb blows up while he's holding it, uh, his hitbox gets displaced. And this displaced hitbox, it lasts for the rest of the level. And it, basically, if you, someone with a displaced hitbox uh, walks up to another character and they're up against a wall or in a corner, you can push them through the wall. So basically, we use the bubble bomb to activate this displacement glitch and we can use it to clip other characters out of bounds. And the out of bounds in this game is extremely unique where hitting the lower limit of the map wraps you back up to the top. So you fall infinitely, but there's so much aerial mobility on like your jumps and aerial drift in this game that you can just maneuver out of bounds by just holding your direction and <clears throat> just navigate anywhere in the level. So yeah. that, and so that's really big because otherwise you would not get the bubble bomb until like over halfway through the game, and it lets you save a ton of time. Yeah, now in like an any percent run where you don't start out, there is a way of doing what I'm about to do here, uh, but it's a bit more complicated. Um, so I'm gonna do one more wrap down to the top, and there's actually a loading zone behind this door that's instantly gonna cut out to the end of the level there, and skip the uh, walker uh, mini boss fight that would normally be done at the end of the level. Um, yeah, very cool. nice. That was pretty good. Um, so this, yeah. this next level here is, um, it's like something else. So basically, we Jaxler and I did a lot of testing uh, uh, on various uh, levels, and <clears> when we were on this level, wizards, uh, playing through it somewhat me. normally, we got to the end of the game and we it's noticed like some like box-like object out of bounds near the end of the level. We were like, "Oh, what is that?" So we we clipped out of bounds, went over there, and it turns out it is this room right here where this cutscene is played. So we're gonna get to do some extremely goofy shenanigans um, coming up in this room. You can probably guess where we're going with this. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so it's important to note that whenever I'm doing one of these out of bounds clips that I have to use both controllers because um, the AI will kind of just uh, maneuver around on its own. So in order to get SpongeBob into a position where I can actually clip a character uh, through a wall, um, I have to be controlling that. So I have two controllers in my lap, kind of like I mentioned at the start here. I have you know, one on my left and one on my right. And so um, basically what I'm doing is once I get one of the characters out of bounds, I actually disconnect SpongeBob from the game. So I only have one controller in and that helps to reset my camera. And then I just fall right into the load zone at the end of the level. Um, so that's all of the Amity Park just done within like 30 seconds. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, now that, that's one of the big benefits of running this on New Game Plus is that normally in an any percent run, you would actually have to get the shrink ray there, which is a, oh, that was a gold too. Wow, that was really good. Whoa, um, nice. Yeah. Nice, um, nice. So, it, like, addition to that, like, you have to get a couple, you, ha you have to go out of your way a little bit to get some, pow like, new abilities for the different characters in an any percent run. Uh, but because we're playing on New Game Plus, we don't have to worry about that, and we can just sequence break straight to the end of the level. Yeah, the bubble um, bomb gives you insane versatility. Versatility. Uh, versatility. That's the yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's it opens up like a lot of different options because there's a lot of spots in the game where you can just clip out of bounds, but in a normal one you just couldn't do it. There's yeah. no way to set up that that glitch. The bubble and bomb will set it up any glitch anywhere you want. Yeah, there are some limitations to it, however, uh, be so the way that we like maneuver out of bounds is that when we fall far enough, like Drunkle said, you get wrapped back up to a specific height. Uh, but sometimes the levels are actually built above that height that you get teleported up to. 
Um, so you can't always just clip and out of bounds travel and win. Um, such as this example here, we're actually going to be doing a. This is probably uh, the first of like the really. The first two out of bounds aren't really that bad um, in terms of executing consistently, especially Amity Park, because Amity Park's like really free. Um, I don't like calling tricks free because it sounds kind of elitist, but that Amity Park's actually just free. Um, but this one's actually really, really hard um, because um, in order to. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Jekyll, could you kind of go into a bit about like kill planes and kind of how I'm going to get myself stuck in the floor here? Yeah, so basically, uh, Jaxor is going to be kind of navigating his way to <clears throat> a specific section of the level. So basically, this level, you need to destroy a bunch of generators. I believe there's, what, four of them total? Three yeah. Four. four of them. Okay, so um, <clears throat> basically, there's a couple rooms uh, with like some puzzles and stuff like that, and then one generator. We're navigating out of bounds straight past the first generator to like the next room. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the room after that has some like lava and like some bridges covering it, so there's kill planes on the floor. So if he were to wrap up and fall and hit one of those kill planes, it would send him straight back to where he clipped out of bounds. So he's got to be. He's got to kind of precisely navigate through the void here, and he's going to get himself stuck in the floor coming up here. <clears throat> and once he's got, like, far enough into... Like, once he lands back in bounds and he navigates far enough into the level... Ah, so he, okay. he had a kill plane there, and he's got to yeah. keep going. But um, he, if you get far enough back in bounds, then you can hit the start button on another controller and have one of the other characters warp straight to you, and that basically lets you skip, like, the entire first section of the level, which is really big. But, yeah, yeah like we said before, this is an extremely hard play. It's, it's one of the hardest in the in the run, definitely. Uh, definitely not the hardest. That one's going to be coming up... Uh, the halfway into the, the run, the game. yeah. Uh, over halfway. It's like two-thirds. Yeah, you're um, right. Yeah. <sighs> It would be easier to refer to it as in, in sections. So there's four different like sections in the run. There's Danny Phantom section, then SpongeBob section, Timmy Turner section, and Jimmy Neutron section. Um, the first ones are th each like three levels in a boss fight, and then Jimmy's is um, one level a, in a, a boss fight. One level and two boss fights. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so. Basically, the first level in Timmy's world is an extremely hard out of bounds, which you'll see. So, uh, okay. so I'm looking for a right certain uh, a visual cue on the camera. I'm going to play it a little safer than I did last time. Okay. So uh, fire, I'm using that little indicated. icon of Danny's head to kind of know where I am out of bounds. And then hopefully, if I hold down here, I should land in the floor just like that. Good. Um, so that big uh, pit in the middle right there is what I, what I accidentally uh, landed in. And so I swap to my other controller, and then once I get Danny far enough away off of camera, I can actually swap back to Danny, and then that clips him back out of the floor, and then we can move on. So uh, we got that second try, so that's not terrible. Um, I think we should also probably talk about the movement a little bit. You'll notice that Jaxler is picking usually either SpongeBob or Danny, mostly Danny, and he's just mashing his normal attack, his punch. Danny's punch, and to a slightly lesser extent, I think, SpongeBob's attack uh, move you forward slightly. So if you just mash that while you're moving forward, that gives you pretty much the fastest movement speed you can get. Yeah. So <laughs> since we're going to hear, since we're going to hear a lot of. Uh, and a lot of you know cutscenes and stuff like that. Uh, did they get the same voice actors from the show for this? Uh, I'm actually not sure. Uh, I know they did for SpongeBob. Um, that it, like like there's there's some instances where they couldn't get voice actors for specific like NPC characters, like Mr. Krabs, for example. Um, this is a pretty Mr. common Krabs thing. Even speak? No, he doesn't. That's how they got around it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I, Clancy, I think it's uh, Clancy Thomas, I think is his name, who's the voice actor for Mr. Krabs in the show. Um, like, typically never, like, get, like, actually reprises his roles in, like, Spongebob games. I don't really know why. Um, so, like, in, like, some Spongebob games where, like, he actually plays, like, a more significant role. Um, like, they have, like, a different voice actor play the character. Um, but for this game, where we would see Mr. Krabs, he just doesn't have any speaking lines at all. Because <laughs> they couldn't like secure the rights to use his voice. Um, yeah. eh, it's whatever. He he's got his his one appearance is kind of funny. He's just like standing in the background, getting money yanked out of his pocket. So it's, <laughs> it's it's pretty great. 
Um, so these generators are all a little bit tricky. I have to use Timmy's ability to freeze things to freeze the central uh, central generator and then break the four nodes on each side. Um, I have to be really careful though, uh, for two reasons. One, because uh, the electricity can kind of put you into a sunlock situation uh, pretty pretty effortlessly. And sometimes your party uh, members can also break the ice uh, that you're setting up here. Especially a displaced um, party member like Spongebob right now. If, if someone gets a displacement glitch on them, sometimes their hitboxes are like massive and Danny Phantom can be like displaced or something. He can be standing like halfway across the platform, throw one punch and it just shatters the ice. Alright, um, so I'm gonna pause here to reset the camera to try to control some of the lag here, and then we're going into a pretty tricky skip. I'm gonna let uh, Drunkle take this one over because this is really, really Yeah, hard. so so this is a skip that I found when we were um, just sort of messing around with the sequence breaks in this level. Basically, the end of level trigger for this level is just past, is just on the staircase, and it's blocked by the gate. The gate doesn't open until you destroy the generators, but we still have displacement glitch. So what he's gonna try to do is clip through the railing there and onto the stairs, and then he'll hit the end of level trigger. And it's a little annoying, because there's also kind of a kill plane right there, and it's also a little easier. That works, to okay, that's third try. But, but he got it, so yeah, because sometimes if you hit the wrong part of that, you just respawn and you have to try it again. Sometimes you can get kind of stuck in the railing, so it's a little pain, like it's a little bit of a pain, but <clears throat> it's... It's not terrible. Yeah, and what, what makes that even harder as well is I have to do that with basically one hand on each of the left sticks, which kind of makes it a little weird. Uh, but luckily, yeah. once you see that you get Danny's head stuck in the floor, if you put him to the right, he catches the slope in a certain way that lets you get the rest of the way up the stairs and hit the loading zone. So that's what I made use of there. Um, you're also Whenever I don't need two characters, I'm also going to just disconnect any controller that I'm not using. Uh, as someone has pointed out probably by now, this game has some issues with frame rate. Um, and the more characters that you have plugged into the game, uh, the more the game tends to lag. Um, so as a result, um, if I'm not using any of the characters for a very specific purpose, I'm going to disconnect them. So I have like the, um, I have one of my controllers that is on Spongebob, I think, that I'm not going to be using. So I have that in my hand right now, so as soon as I start the fight, I can turn that controller off, and then we're going to be swapping to Danny for the Vlad fight, um, which yeah, I'm probably going to let Drunkle explain as well. Yeah, it actually makes like a really tangible difference. Um, it's not how many people and be considered when we were first learning this, trying to do a four-person co-op, and the game was nearly unplayable. Um, yeah. So basically, the fight here, um, Jaxler has to use Danny's overshadow ability to take control of Mr. Fenton, and then he punches out Vlad's shield, and then you just want to do as much damage to him as you can. And then he kind of warps away to... Oh, you got a fast Vlad there. So he, he warps away to different sections of the map and you can hit him again. If you position another character towards the bottom of the screen, you can get Vlad to immediately warp back up to the center position and do his shield cycle again. That's a little bit tougher to do with just... That should be Vlad's fast Vlad again. Uh, so looks like we're yeah. going to get the free oh, cycle awesome. here. Yeah, so he, he's like he like waits a little bit down there after Vlad disappears, because if you're just waiting down there, he goes straight back up top. Normally, perfect if you Vlad. don't do that, awesome. That was a perfect like, three cycle. So, yeah. Nice just normally he'll just pick a corner and he'll go to that corner and like phase out and you can you can hit him if Danny goes ghost you can hit him while he's transparent but otherwise you'll get like one hit or hit uh, one hit in and he goes away so staying towards the bottom kind of forces him back up to the top of the screen there so that's a really good fight so yeah. that's it for Danny's section and now we are going to the bottom for a couple levels of yeah I also gotta just know like how massive Timmy's head is. Like it's just so apparent in this cutscene. It's, like it's just how big his noggin, <laughs> how big his noggin is. We're actually gonna be taking uh, advantage of that in the next level when we introduce a tech called uh, NPC jumping, which uh, we won't get into yeah. quite yet until it actually becomes relevant. Um, but yeah, some of the character like, models in this game are just funny. It, um, his body's like a toothpick with like a little appetizer meatball on top of it or something. Like, his really skinny <laughs> body, and then his gigantic head. <clears throat> and the smile. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's always smiling. He's, the he's smile is kind of creepy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for this first section here, uh, we have kind of an escort sequence with uh, Sandy here. Uh, on solo, on, on uh, 
when you're playing co-op, you can have one person kind of hang in the back and take care of the enemies while uh, one person goes forward with Danny. Um, but because I don't have that luxury right now, I'm actually going ahead and taking care of some of these uh, bigger robot enemies with the spears. Uh, because we're waiting on Sandy in order to get to the next section of the level here. And uh, Sandy can't really get past... Sandy tends to get stuck on those enemies there, so I pick up the orange, like, buff power up. So that we can guarantee that Sandy gets here, to here pretty quickly. Yeah, sometimes she will get like caught up trying to fight stuff. Yeah, it, it's it's. That wasn't really too bad. Weird. Wait, where's where's the, oh, there's the bridge. I thought the bridge was just gone. <laughs> it just didn't load in. I, I wouldn't be I surprised, know. honestly. Yeah. So oh, this level, this the level is bridge has collapsed. <laughs> yep. Ah heck, darn. Um, but yeah, um, this it. is where uh, the the frame rate is going to be very very noticeable. Um, as we uh, get into this next section here, um, we're going to be seeing uh, an ability here with SpongeBob where he can uh, suck up water, if I can actually switch to him. Uh, one thing to note was sw you swap characters with a D-pad in this game, and the GameCube D-pad is not super amazing. Um, so, like, sometimes you'll, like, try to swap to a character, and it just will not happen. Um, yeah, so right like, here... Oh, sorry. Uh, right here, uh, I'm going to go for a cutscene skip. Let me see if I hit it. Going ghost around here. Nice, I hit it. Okay. Perfect, so yeah. whenever I'm in like this ship, like this ghost form, uh, going ghost, as you'll hear Danny say all the time, uh, if you hold the X button after you jump, you actually get like an extra bit of horizontal reach, and I can actually use that to uh, jump around an unskippable cutscene, which saves a couple of seconds in movement there. Um, as you were saying, uh, I was basically saying that the combination of like the layout of the characters on the on the screen plus how bad the game pad is like. Who you end up swapping to is in the cruel hands of fate. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you never you never really know what's actually going to happen. All right, so now we're getting into the NPC jumping that I was alluding to earlier. I'm, oh, this is actually pretty tough, so I'm going to let Drunkle kind of explain what I'm going to be doing here. Yeah, so basically, um, when you swap out of a character, sometimes they'll just do actions on their own. If there's, like, something nearby them that needs to, like, get done, so, like, they'll move towards an enemy to fight it, something like that. What we're doing here is we're jumping on top of another character's, frankly, massive head. And uh, then he's quitting out of the game. So he's having Jimmy jump on top of Timmy there and then quit out. And the character sees, oh, this ledge is within jumping uh, reach. I should just jump up there. So as soon as he quits out, Jimmy just automatically jumps up onto the ledge and it lets you skip a puzzle where SpongeBob has to like suck in some water and rehydrate and leave Right, we got the There's second another first one try there. as well. So nice. does you see that little like flat gray pancake looking thing like in the top right of the screen that was over there? That was an amoeba and SpongeBob needs to spray it with water. But instead we just do the jump and we don't have to do any of that. Because SpongeBob when he's like full of water is very slow. He is my goodness, he's very slow. So we just want to try to avoid that as much as possible. <clears throat> Yeah, and then through here we got just kind of another uh, Sandy Escort that, uh, where the frame rate is going to chug. Um, I don't know if anybody's able to hear the disk drive on the on my Wii by now, uh, but it's trying its its, it's darn best. Uh. <laughs> Jasper's Wii has a real real time trying to run this game. I have no idea why. Um, actually, I do know why this game is like not good. But as, oh, oh, speaking of this game being not good, uh, this cutscene is great. <clears throat> because Sandy is just, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Oh, you, no, you can't go over Yeah, I, I, so, I, I, I wish that was a thing. Alright, so this time, you you boys go first. Ah, heck. Ah, heck. You, and then, like, a full second luck. or two after the ah, heck, the bridge breaks. Like, she, she's <laughs> clairvoyant. Yeah. Um, so this part of uh, uh, Bikini Bottom is incredibly laggy, so get, if y'all are into very choppy frame rates, this is like the best part of the run. Um, I love clams. Yeah, I, the clams I, I, can be kind of annoying. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, frame rate will clear up a little bit here. Um, is, it, we talk is, this it, is it sad that I'm saying I'm clamoring at the idea of a better frame rate? <laughs> That's that's really sad, actually. You should be ashamed okay. of yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'll see myself so, out. Bye. Um, so in this, oh, I actually, what? Uh, somehow I clipped SpongeBob in here. Unfortunately. Oh, nice. uh, normally you can skip that um, if you manage your camera properly. And we're gonna use the doodle bob. Oh, I missed the doodle bob shot. How many times is this gonna take? Two. 
Oh, I literally oh, took a leap of faith. Yeah, that after I take worked. a running <laughs> jump off the ledge to make it happen. Oh, you, you, oh, yeah, you did get the guy in there. Okay. So yeah, yeah. now we some some of these people have been. I guess. Well, what's the story reason? Did they get like driven away by plankton or something? Yeah. So we, we gotta find the bikini bottom townspeople. Um. Yeah, so I'm gonna get that one with SpongeBob and then immediately character swap to Danny so he can bounce up uh, onto the lever to cross the bridge. And I'm gonna make sure I kill all those enemies there, or at least most of them. And then because we're so far ahead of the rest of our team, I can actually teleport SpongeBob over here right onto the puddle so he doesn't have to walk too far with a slow move speed. <clears throat> Oops, I missed the jump. Um, nice. There we go. <laughs> I went ghost a little too late there, but that's not a huge deal. It happens. So I'm gonna go up into the uh, right, top side of that right there so that um, th those jellyfish, when they aren't inflated with water, uh, will actually damage you. Uh, so I take, I purposely go to the top side of it so that it doesn't hurt me, because yeah. micro's easy. <clears throat> now we're coming to the end of the level here, so. Um, yeah, yeah, so this, this level, level we can't is a bit really, longer. Yeah, we can't break it with clips. I've tried so hard. It, it, it's very possible to go out of bounds, but there's a lot of kill planes all around the areas where you have to escort Sandy. Um, so it becomes kind of cumbersome. Uh, that was Anyone out there who wants to, if you can find a uh, run viable setup for a Bikini Bottom 1 out of bounds like to the end of the level, I will give you a nice firm handshake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that would be that would be awesome. <laughs> that could be figured out. But I mean, even without it, this run's still. Fun. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So we got a ridiculously long cutscene here that isn't exact. This is just a a lore dump. Um. So I don't know if we have like anything to plug or talk about. Oh yeah. There's there's one thing that we can plug. I don't know. There's a thing happening in a couple of days. I, I, do you all know about this thing happening in a couple of days? I might have heard about it, but why don't you tell us anyway? <laughs> yeah, it's this thing called Summer Games Done Quick. It's going to start up wow. in four days in June 26th. Prize submissions are now open. And of course, speaking of events, Frame Fatales will be having its next all women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, in late August. Type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame for for more information on that. Yeah, SGQ, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna be there. Jaxler's gonna be there. It's gonna, I'm gonna be, be there. A it's gonna be a fantastic time, so be sure. Yeah, to if you want that. Nicktoons lessons, you should come drop yeah, by. Yeah, walk up <laughs> in the practice walk up, to, walk up to either of us at GDQ and ask for Nicktoons lessons, and we will happily teach you this game. Um, or okay, unhappily, so depending on how we're feeling. Or on right. yeah, depending on how, depending on the day, <clears throat> depending <laughs> on how many runs deep we are. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Jaxler is doing a clip here. Uh, this is the cl this clip in any percent sucks. It is terrible. You have to like walk up against the fence and like find some specific spot you can pass through. It's not good. It's so th this th this it's way better in this category. So we just clip through the gate and it's gonna. There's it, casually in this game you have to fight these like flea bo flea bots to like suck people up. It's got like a big vacuum. I. You, I don't even remember like how you like beat it normally. Yeah, we just skip them. So we just so never. Yeah, really we just skip them. <clears throat> so I'm gonna so land yeah. on this invisible floor up here and start my punches and kicks. Um, so what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to be the. It, usually because like a lot of the world won't load in until I get to specific parts. The way that I know where I'm going is based on camera cues. Um, so the camera turns there, so I stop going up into the right and transition from up into up left. Uh, because I'm trying to walk a very specific line so that I line myself up with um, basically a, a spot where I can fall underneath this floor I'm walking on right now so I can get back in bounds. Because similar to the previous level, uh, there are kill planes everywhere. And those can cause problems for, uh, now that we're out of bounds, getting back in safely. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm navigating uh, to this part of the scenery here, back here. And I'm going to go towards this rock, and you'll see Danny kind of fall through. And then I immediately hold back into the right, and then I should eventually fall, and then, boom, land back in bounds. And then we can swap Beautiful. to Jimmy. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and swap yeah. to Jimmy. This is normally where we would pick up Jimmy's flare gun, which is like one of the like nicest tools to have in a co-op run uh we just need to yeah. use it right there um yeah we, we kind of like 
it's normally like you just use it as a puzzle solving tool but when we were doing runs we kind of figured out that you can use it to stun enemies and the stunned enemies since they're not moving around as much they generate a lot less lag and it also just stops them from attacking you so you can have yeah, especially the projectile the, enemies those projectiles all add up to like the, the like the big octopus and the big spear dude you can just stun them and then just go straight past them it's extremely convenient yeah um so there's like th that's like one example uh, how did that hit me um so we're gonna talk to flying dutchman here and go liberate his ghost crew um something that you'll see me do on occasion is just pause and unpause at seemingly random spots and that will actually force the game to check which way the camera should be rotated and a lot of times i can use that to rotate the camera to a more favorable position so that it actually unloads some of the enemies in the previous era area uh, so that they become less of a problem. I killed that guy too slow, um, so he's gonna be a problem. Can you follow over, you know, please? Thank you. <laughs> you know, for half for half a second there, when I look up at the top, when I look at the top right, and I see the the creature over there, I thought that was like an off an off version of Red Tar. <laughs> if only they were as cool as Red Tar. A two thousands yeah. rendition of Red Tar. <laughs> And these guys, not not that cool. They turn invisible, and then when they become visible, they spin, and that's it. <laughs> so yeah, we gotta take care of six of them. They're always in the same spot in these treasure chests. How are you still standing, fella? Person, feel like that. Ghost thing. He's got he's got the zoom moves. <clears throat> oh, so Jax, you're gonna be showing off that. Uh, new yeah, I'm gonna go for it. All right. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so Jaxler, so hard. So Jaxler recently found this. Uh, Not quite. It, it, it's a pretty precise glide There's invisible jump. walls I have to get around. All right, second try's good. Nice, second try. Yeah, so normally you have to, there's like a puddle of water on like the lower level of the ship. You like go down there with SpongeBob, suck it up, and then you have to walk like around part of the ship and across that thing and spit the water into a bucket and it drops a bridge. And as we mentioned before, SpongeBob walks very slow when he's full of water. So that skip saves like more time than you would have. There's two more ghosts here. Again, I'm going to continue to do that thing where I occasionally pause the game in order to reset the camera's uh, rotation so that I can get a little bit more uh, favorable frame rate. <laughs> you know what's sad when you're playing a GameCube game and you have like frame rate adjustment strats like an, it's, it's an N64 game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. It's big tunes, you know? You and I don't, I don't say that as an indictment against the devs of the game, obviously. You know, there's so many, like, different circumstances that lead to, you know, stuff like this. Um, the game, like, if you play this game in co-op, it can actually be a really fun time. Oh, this argue. game is incredible. And I, even if you don't want to speedrun it, I highly recommend all people who can play it do play it. Because it is an experience. <clears throat> Just for the cutscenes alone, honestly. Um... Yeah, we're actually looking pretty good pace-wise so far as we go into factory. Um, this yeah. is going to be most mostly, as, if I do this right, this, this level will be almost entirely out of bounds. Um, but getting out of bounds and then staying out of bounds is actually very tricky here. Um, so yeah, after so we get, for, yeah, I'll like, I'll jump ahead. Well, for reference for a, a comment I made at the start of the run, uh, where I said that we don't get the bubble bomb until most of the way through the run, you don't get the bubble bomb until the end of this level. So that's like all the out of bounds that we've done up until now, including the one that we're about to see, is just not possible in any percent. And that's <clears throat> that's what's so great about um, uh, New Game Plus. So Jaxler gets the displacement glitch here, and now he's going to clip out of bounds. And basically, there's this whole big section where you have to free Patrick and then run through, like, sabotaging machines and, like, freeing jellyfish and stuff. And there's this whole big level. It's winding around all over the place. And basically, he's going to clip out and he's going to navigate all around, like, all the geometry in this level all the way to the end of it. <clears throat> Ideally. If he lands back in bounds in, like, there's a couple specific rooms where we have setups for getting back out of bounds. Uh, even like in the the room right before the end where there's like a closed door, we can click through it. But hopefully he'll be able to. All right, I'm still out of bounds. Good. Yeah. This is the this is the room you really got to worry about. You're gonna see the camera pan this way towards me, and so that that's how you know I got the right angle. And then I'm gonna remain relatively wide here. Uh, with uh, so wide. I'm 
Yeah, why? Uh, <laughs> inside joke. Um, but uh, yeah, so what I'm doing here is even though I can't, it doesn't look like I can really see where I'm going, I'm using the visual cues of the geometry that's normally just kind of out, out of bounds decoration in order to have a general idea of where I'm going. And then once I see those lasers, I'm going to start to angle up into the right. So that way I can, uh, I have to be very careful. There's like a, 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 a tunnel here where you, where you have to free a jellyfish. And there's a pretty big horizontally sized kill plane, but it, towards like the back part of it, towards these pipes, you can actually squeeze around it just fine. So as the camera starts to turn here, you're gonna start turning up into the left and then more towards the left. And then if I keep going this way around this tunnel, it'll take me to the room right at the end of the chum bucket and the end of the level. So hopefully we land just right in there. I didn't quite land in there, that's okay. Yeah, this last bit is a little precise. Uh, I think, we, yeah, he's back yeah. in bound. So, so what I'm gonna have to do this door. is try to. Ah, I don't quite yeah. get it. So I need SpongeBob, another controller, and we're just going to clip, and we're good. Right. Yeah. Cool. Now that we've seen good. Jellyfish, it's time to find plankton. Yeah. I mean, it, it's we're we're lucky grabs. that it's easy enough to just back it up if you land in this room because it is very easy to accidentally clip back in when you uh, hit the end of that out of bounds. So. It, it it's a bit of a pain. Okay, so now we have the one of the most annoying fights in the game. Yeah. Um, so there's not really any way to speed it up. We've tried messing around with fast strats. We've tried clipping through various portions of the level. Uh, remember what I said about Mr. Krabs earlier? Uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Poor guy. He must have the money like glued to his to his pocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> Money. <clears throat> hey, yeah, no, we I make money. What would your mother think? My name's Um, so for this fight in single player, I'm actually I I've been starting to integrate this into my play a little bit more. It's really hard to get a six cycle, which is the fastest form of the fight, um, like in solo, just because of how tough it can be to do uh, damage output uh, because Plankton is so tanky. Um, with his robot. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, a kind of a new strat I've been trying to develop. I haven't gotten it to work quite yet, but you know it's still worth trying because you know if I miss it, you know, I just get the seven cycle. That's chill. Um, but we're gonna wait out this first phase here of him doing an attack here on purpose because the first time that plank like that plankton spawns in and attacks, like his hitbox just does not work for whatever reason. Oh yeah. And so horrible. then I'm gonna position these two here. And then kind of attack with two characters essentially at the same time um, to try to maximize damage there. It's really tricky because um, it's like trying to, you know, uh, pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time or whatever it is. Um, but that's essentially what I'm trying to do here. And hopefully if I do enough damage over the course of the fight, I can six cycle. I have yet to hit it, um, but if I do, that would be a massive goal. So. Yeah, them, it's it, it, it's hard and it's a little tricky even to do in like co-op because yeah. the, this, this fight's just a pain. But so to do it with two controllers would be ridiculous. But um, <clears throat> especially because like SpongeBob, you'll notice SpongeBob's like moving there when he's moving around. So yeah, uh, for that first cycle, it kind of moved him out of position to do damage, which it's it's kind of hard to avoid that honestly. But it's. It's a little annoying, but it's not that, huge, yeah, that big of a deal. Basically, each cycle is just Plankton spawns a bunch of these, I don't even know what they are, little gremlin looking dudes. Yeah. And then you just, you just beat them up, and then he jumps down after. I, I don't even think you have to beat all of them up. We just do it to reduce lag. But then after a fixed yeah. amount of time, he jumps down and uh, opens up his stomach or whatever. And then when you get him down to low enough health, he will. Um, start lunging at you and doing attacks before he opens himself up for the bubble bomb. Yeah. So you just gotta kinda I don't even know. <clears throat> it, Pray. It's basically <laughs> an auto it's it, it's uh, it's not really an auto scroller, but it also kinda is. It's I, an auto scroller really until you make a mistake in your damage output that makes you lose time. Yeah. It's auto scroller until you mess up, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. Just don't mess up. Oh, Jimmy was getting a couple hits in there. Let's go. That's what, four cycles? Yeah, Jimmy's actually helping out this time. The AI doesn't like to 
Um, the reason I can mostly control melee characters is um, like the ranged characters can only fire like one shot at a time, and your melee characters can usually do a multi-hit combo. But the AI is really dumb for some reason, so like it likes to just do single hits and not do like the full combo. Yeah, now we're going into eyeball lasers in phase four. Yeah. <clears throat> I wish I had eyeball lasers. Sounds sick. <laughs> I, I wish y'all could have seen the maneuver I had to do there in order to get shields up on Jimmy there so he wouldn't take damage. I, like, hit it with yeah. the palm of my hand. <laughs> another, another really cool thing about these characters is that they tend to run into damage and die. Uh, quite, quite a bit, actually. Um, especially on a fight later on, like the second to last fight in the run, they tend to die. At the, uh, is that five cycles? Um, this, is f this is fifth cycle, yeah. Um, so we might be on pace for a, if I if I hit the six cycle, this will be the first time I've ever hit a TA, which is if he, if wow. he hits a six cycle, he is the greatest gamer who's ever lived. Yeah, yeah and I'm also like for sure on PB pace, which is hilarious. Um, Seriously, wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I was I, no, I had a really I had a really good SpongeBob section. I'm only point four behind. Um, so if I hit it, we're ahead by like a minute. Uh, if wow. I miss it. We're even. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? We're honestly Basically, close enough. I think we might actually be on pace to hit it. Um, I it's all going to depend on... Uh, yeah, just send your prayers, y'all. Come on, buddy. All right, here we go. Go, 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 go. Let's go. Okay, yes. we got it. That's nice. huge. Okay. SpongeBob was even like hitting in the other direction, and he still managed. To yeah, that's because it's it's really hard to attack with two characters at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, one, if SpongeBob's in the wrong direction, if you're mashing A, he will start walking away from the target, and it's a pain. Speaking of a pain, actually, uh, we're coming up on uh, Timmy Timmy Turner One, which is uh, Crocker's Fortress. Uh, so earlier in the run, you're we talking about that Vlad's Castle clip and how it was the second hardest clip in the run. Uh, we're coming up on the hardest clip in the run, and. Uh, well, it's not the clip that's hard. The clip's actually the easiest part. It's staking the landing is the hardest part. Yeah, um, it's navigating the out of bounds. Basically, um, I, I, I guess I can describe it right now. Uh, yeah, so basically, basically Crocker's Fortress is split up into um, two sections. There's the, the fortress itself, which is just like a bunch of hallways and yada yada yada, big fortress for Crocker. Um, and then you get to the end of that section, and you have to redirect five beams of light onto a crystal. In what I refer to as trials, because I love Zelda, and of course it's trials. Uh, so basically, um, we're going to clip out of bounds right at the very start of the run. And um, <clears throat> he's going to navigate out of bounds past the entirety of the fortress section. And once once he finishes the fortress section, he'll, he'll like... You can either land directly in trials, or you can... Um, hit the cussing trigger for entering trials but there's a lot of like pits and stuff throughout the level which results in kill planes so you kind of have to and, and there's one kill plane that's like right near the cutscene trigger we want to hit so basically you have to navigate around all this collision and all these kill planes just to get to the end and even at the very end of it there's a good chance to just hit a kill plane and have to the entire out of bounds yeah if plankton doesn't injure run then this is the level that does most like yeah. times out of ten. It, it is it is very easy to mess this clip up so oh well not the clip mess the out of bounds up so Jack was, yeah, Jack has been practicing a lot, but um, <laughs> even then, it's still really hard. It, it's it's a it's a crapshoot basically. It's hard to get it or not to come flip. Yeah. Actually, so, I think you said earlier you were like 50-50 on hitting this. So yeah. So I have I have to I have to ask because I, I every time I see games that are very glitchy like this, how did people find these glitches? No um, I actually <laughs> don't know because a lot of the glitch hunting for this was done by uh, two other co-op runners, Chiringu and uh, 40, 4100 Hertz, um, yeah. who did basically, like a lot of the glitch we, hunting. Yeah, basically we learned most of what we know about the game from watching their runs and asking them questions in the Nicktoons Discord. And we, we did a lot of experimentation on our own for stuff like that last generator skip and a lot of the out-of-bounds for New Game Plus. But pretty much, like, 
the displacement glitch and this clip and a bunch of other stuff that came from any percent that we all picked up from them they they blazed the trail for us and uh <clears throat> big shout outs to them honestly because <laughs> uh, yeah we, we we would not be doing all well, i mean we would probably this be would not this be here right now if it weren't for them <laughs> if it wasn't for them yeah this is this is all on them so yeah, uh, if you if, if you if you're not having fun with the choppy frame rate you can blame sharingu and hurts <laughs> did, we, did we even tell did we even tell them that we're like doing this run we probably i posted have. in the discord oh okay okay i, I wasn't sure stream. all right so i'm gonna right, start we're, turning we're, this is the hard part get, yeah we're getting kind of near the end here um, this clip, will, this out of bounds alone, is why my estimate is so high, despite having like a one fourteen um, in the category. It was just because of how inconsistent this can be. So we're gonna hold forward and then upright. Oh, we hit it! Let's go! Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. So that's so that's the slightly slower but much 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 easier version of the out of bounds, where you hit the cutscene trigger for trials, as we as I call it. Um, Ba that's basically perfect because sometimes you'll get to that end bit and like i said you'll hit a kill plane and you'll go all the way back to the start and that's like a minute long out of bounds section oh. to redo. so that that's huge that is that's a really huge big. section of the run so yeah re really nice that we hit that so basically we've got like five trials now of just using various power-ups from different characters to solve puzzles like yeah. the layer here Okay, I thought you jumped too early there. If, if the platform there is too low, um, sometimes... You fall through it like that. You fall through it like that, <laughs> yeah. And normally, does, like, I would do this part with Danny, but I've actually started to use uh, Jimmy's Helmet Batch, which doesn't have a lot of uses on it, in order to get to the button <clears throat> a little bit faster, since you have yeah, to lose Jimmy anyway. Yeah, normally, the Helmet Bash you use, like, one time at the very end of the run. <laughs> Yeah. And it's because the game requires like there's like one button press in the last fight that requires it and that's the only reason that we can pick it up. Also, that little trick there, so you can just kinda like go to switch characters or something as you fall like out of bounds there and you'll switch back to the very start of the uh the section and it, it skips you having to go like all the way back through the trial that you just went through. It's <clears throat> it's it's kinda cool. Yeah, so uh, this one, you're supposed to hit a button with Timmy, but I can just push him right through the wall. Uh, As you do. You can. Oh. As you do, you know. Hopefully. This is yeah. like a really... Um, oh, that's the wrong character. Uh, don't pick up that bomb. Because that would be bad. Usually picking up bombs normally doesn't end well. Well, if yeah, I pick up the uh, bomb and, and uh, it might, if, and I put it back, well, if I picked up the bomb and let it explode, it would, I would keep object displacement glitch. Um, but I'm actually leaving SpongeBob logged into the game on purpose because I'm going to swap out of Danny here, uh, which is going to put the camera right on SpongeBob. And then because Danny's off screen, if I swap to him, it'll teleport him back through the wall and I don't have to clip in the opposite direction, essentially. Yeah. This is like the only like one we have a strat for that for like like that for it because for the rest of these we have some of these pits that we can end up using. Um, yeah. So for this middle section, uh, all of these crushers operate on a local cycle that starts when you get close enough for this to load in. And what you can actually do is go ghost, and you are completely invincible. And so you can actually get squished by these and like not void out. So you can actually make some faster cycles here and avoid having to wait. Yeah, if your movement's good enough and your ghost the entire time, then you can just slip underneath all of these and. Uh, I didn't make the last stop. one, but that's okay. That's the hardest one to make. Yeah, yeah your I'll, movement has to be like you perfect. Have to stop if you if, if you step on one more ghost, did it just like go invisible? It, it just passes through you pretty much. Yeah. Because I mean, your your ghost stuff just passes through you. It's, it's I mean, that makes sense as a ghost would, you know? Yeah, you know, like you do. And yeah. Wait, yeah. SpongeBob was all the way over here. That's so fast. Okay. So normally SpongeBob's like oh not God. that close. I got yeah, really lucky there. That's I, really that's funny. A, I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. That's really That's cool. really lucky. Um, so I'm actually going to let the AI the edge hold up. Of the, yeah. yeah, normally they're just waiting on like the edge of the pit. But he was like all the way back in the main hall. That's really he was ready fast. to rumble. That was really nice of him. Yeah, That's cool. We're gonna take it a little safe here because uh, during practice yesterday, I actually clipped into this button you're about to see me press, and oh, uh, it soft locked me. So 
we're gonna play it a little bit safe and just clip like that. And we're just gonna let go of the stick entirely because all we need to do is just get, oh, I went too far. That's funny. Yeah, um, all we need to do is just get on top. <laughs> is just get on top. Oh my God, you were really close to the edge there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then I actually don't remember which controller has Danny right now, so I'm going to probably DC whichever one Danny. No, I'll probably yeah. DC SpongeBob's controller, and then uh, because we skipped the puzzle, we can just walk right over the top. It's really funny. There's like a theory route that like we've tried to make happen, where instead of like going back through the middle and then going to the next path, that you like clip like through the walls back there. Uh, but the problem, uh, especially when you go out of bounds, is the camera is very unfriendly, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And um, it rotates to try to, you know, keep focused on what it assumes you are doing, which is being inside the bounds of the map. Um, we are not. Uh, so sometimes you can actually get like a full, like 180 degree turn on your camera and get completely lost if you're not careful. Um, so there's definitely some room for optimization there, um, but... You know, even if we did have those strats available to us now, I would not be going for them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's very tricky to go for. I mean, when we 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 spent a lot of time trying to make it work, and it just kind of hasn't. So, so maybe I, one day, but not today. I did see a question in chat that was intriguing. In terms of the plot of this game, is it canon to the lore of all four video games? Or is it probably just probably not? You know, probably not. I, um, it, it might be internally consistent with the other Nicktoons games, but I'm not sure. I've only ever we. I think we both only ever grew up with this one. Um, yeah, I, I never owned any of the others. I know, like within the Nicktoons shows, there's been Jimmy and Timmy crossover like episodes and stuff. Yeah, but that's there, canon. Been, yeah, that's canon. But none of the other stuff is canon, and I doubt that the game's plot is canon. Uh, I was gonna say we were just gonna abandon Spongebob over there, but he decided to void back in over here, which is funny. Um, but yeah, we got all five of these, and we are good to go. That was really, really good all around. <clears throat> yeah, that was a really sick Crocker's Fortress. So Crocker's Fortress is, uh, it, it's hard. It's, it's hard. A, There's a lot of small little optimizations with each of those little challenges, and it's all preceded by the hardest clip in the game, so, or hardest out of bounds in the game. So now we're going to be kind of on easy mode. We got, um, Fairy World coming up here. Fairy um, World's got, like, some, like, I, like, Fairy World is, like, flashy, um, but isn't super, super bad compared to Crocker's yeah. Fortress, I'd say. It, it, it does also, that one also golded by seven seconds, just saying. Oh my uh, god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was really wow. good. <laughs> Can we get some of Jaxler's Stuart Little emotes and chat, please? <laughs> I love how Vesper just does not have any context for what that means. <laughs> nope. 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 Don't worry about nope. it. No. Nope. Yeah, just. It's, it's I still fine. laugh. I still laugh. It's <laughs> humorous. I love the Stuart Little copy poster. It's like, God, I hate Stuart Little so much. So much. I <laughs> see that little red car, like. <laughs> it's a little red sweater. What are you saying? It's like also this, this meme I saw with like, parents in the orphanage looking at all the kids and they're like, yeah, we'll take the rat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so Fairy World has got a. It, it's it's a really good like effort to speed ratio um, trick coming up here. The first part of Fairy World is like you go all the way like all around Fairy World saving fairies. I don't even remember how you save them, uh, but you do, and um, we can skip all of that by doing one of those NPC jumps coming up. Basically, there's a big fence. And it doesn't open until you uh, save, save the fairies. the fairies. So instead, we jump over the fence yep. and just get all of that. <laughs> it's it's pretty great. Uh, I mean, the same thing happens in Amity Park, where like in the cutscene after they talk about how it's a ghost-free zone, but by clipping out of bounds, we skip saving any of the ghosts. Uh, it's there's a lot of re really tedious, boring stuff that we don't do in this run, and it's great. So yeah, this this big fence does not open up until you save all the fairies, or if you make, or if you abuse the fact that Timmy Turner has a gigantic head, um, you can just. Uh, I'm struggling uh, to like get Timmy in the corner for some he also, reason. He also also like cleans his hair with just like. Soap. Frisco. Frisco, yeah, with Frisco. I was trying to think of something that's like 
the lubricant. Like, there we go. That was a little bit slow, but that's fine. Something. All right, now this is where, like, wait out for a second there? Yeah, I did. It didn't lose me any time, though. We're gonna wait out here on purpose and jump into a void plane that actually takes us to a higher platform, so we skip some of the platforming there. And we're gonna do it again here to uh, skip this Temple of Doom. I don't even know, like, what, I don't know what kind of fortress this is. I just call it the Temple of Doom. Uh, we're gonna fly yeah, right into here. I don't even think this is, like, a canon place in Fairy World. I mean, I, I'm not caught up in my fairly odd parents. Right, let's we'll see if I hit this. This is all swag. Oh, we hit it! Oh, <laughs> no, man. I hung there for a little bit too. Yeah, that, I don't know if you saw that. Little, I, thought, I thought it was gonna fall there. <laughs> you, you bounce right on the edge of that cloud, and it lets you just skip going around a little bit. There's yeah. also one strat here that's like, I mean, you can just get on top of that and jump up there. I've also we've also gotten damage boosted like up here I, before. There we go. I don't. That's not a hard trick. I don't know why I was yeah, having a. Shout out to the one time we were doing practice and I got hit by an explosive from that octopus dude and, it and just completely up, up onto the ledge. That was was that practice or was that in a run? That was practice. We were not doing a run. If we were oh, doing that a sucks. Run, it <laughs> I know. I'm so sad. I don't even think we have the video of it anymore. So like nobody will ever believe it. Yeah. Bad. Never go for the damage oh. boost there. Just do the easy strat. We we used to as a. Meme. Oh, I don't okay, have so. any. Oh, this is a slight problem. Um, Gotta go to the rail. Please drop purple. Oh, you don't have any. No, he just oh. dropped it. Okay, that should work. Cool. All right. <laughs> I Wait, went goes, go, go goes for a little too long. I just mismanaged my 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 purple Kool Aid. Um, yeah. So the. I mean, we didn't even mention the yellow stuff is health, purple stuff uh, powers your special abilities, like Bubble Bomb and Ghostly Whale. Uh, <clears throat> or going SpongeBob, throw the bomb. Thank you. SpongeBob is really protective of his Bubble Bombs. Yeah. Uh, so this is basically the end of the level. Like, we skipped the majority of it by... That was a really bad fairy world, but we're still going to be probably even against me. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. I love I love how because we skipped the fairy thing, we got that one dopey looking dude in the top right of the screen, just like giving you those massive eyes. Let's yeah. Up and stop. <clears throat> okay, so now it's time for big, big Crocker. Uh, big, this is a big fight. It's, it's a, uh, the big wand. The big Crocker's wand. Big wand. Crocker. Crocs, my man. Like, look at this dude. Look at this. Uh, I love his. I love his like outfitted bike helmet with the chin strap. Why does, he, <laughs> why does he look like Dexter's dad? Uh, that's a great question. Anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, basically in this fight, he's he throws he's running around throwing literal magic at you, and you gotta you gotta beat him up, and then his little generators stop functioning, and then it acts basically like the generators from Vlad's castle where you freeze them and then you destroy them, and. You can do this first. This first one is two cycles, right? Or is it the one cycle? Nice pants. Yeah, the, 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 in the first phase here, one cycling is like next to impossible, um, just because yeah, I, you don't have enough time to cover the ground. Also, I think, oft, I think like casually, you're supposed to like hit him with bobble bombs or something. But Clef's hand, or Jimmy's just fists. They're not Jimmy. Tim, uh, Danny. Danny's fists are gigantic, and so is Clef's chin. So you can just smack him from like on the ground, and then and it just works. I, yeah, I so know. I just need to hit at least two generators here. Oh, I saw so someone that's core posting in chat. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that we have some cultured people in the speedrunning community. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite, like, there's there's all those Twitter accounts that post, like, something each day of the week. That's one of, that's that's up there with, like, one of my favorites, along with, um, today's Wednesday, or as I like to call it, Thursday. Thursday, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's probably my favorite one. <clears throat> yeah, minus the, minus the anime. Um, yeah, yeah, minus the anime. Um... There's not a whole lot to say about this fight other than I, I can't hear the game audio from where I am right now, but Crocker makes some ridiculous noises. Really yeah, play. and this in this next phase here is when we're going to try to go for some cycle skips. Oh, oh, oh! It's so great. I love this 
So the thing is with me is I get audio, but I'm getting the audio on a delay. So when something oh. happens, it takes me a second to hear it, which makes things even better. Oh yeah, that's great. That's that's the true viewing experience, honestly. <laughs> Two. Three. Three. This one was in co-op. This is like a free one cycle, but all right, there we go. <clears throat> This is probably gonna be like what four cycles or something. Um, I've hit the two cycle before. I'm gonna try to go for really? it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, two cycle is uh, requires a bit of coordination. Okay, I might not be able to hit it now. It'll be close. Cycle. Yeah, not enough time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. A Swing and a miss. Um, but like, I can still try to three cycle, which would still be pretty fast. Um, yeah, definitely. So the fastest you can do this fight is in two phases. Um, so I'm gonna have to settle for three at best, um, which is totally, totally fine. Um, I also have to be careful to manage my lives. Anytime one of my characters dies, it loses a life. And if you run out, um, like you just came over instantly. So you... <clears throat> Although I think you haven't really. Um... Oh, yeah, he had to jump over that big chop wave there because that turns you into one of those little gremlin dudes and you can't really do anything. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I don't think you've, like, died at all uh, this run so far, which is really good. I probably can't make the cycle, but I'm still, it's still worth the try. Um, yeah, that sucks. It, it's, it's annoying when you have one character up top. Yeah, see how I'm getting pushed? Oh, I'm not even gonna be able to make it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that this is something that's much easier in co-op because you can have one person move closer to the bottom of the screen, and then when you go to finish the cycle, they can start moving farther up top. But the camera can only pan so far when two characters are on screen, so it's yeah. like <clears throat> there's not really a lot you can do. It's a bit of a pain. Like you said, Crocker's kind of annoying, but eh, that's how it works. That's how it be. Really do be like that sometimes. I really do. Like the bee movie. is being really rude. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take this top one. That's yeah, smart. Oh, oh, I might be able to make it work off of this. Oh, come on. Clutch it out. Ah, too slow. Oh. Oh. I still have another shot of going for it if Crocker decides to go to the bottom right. Guards! Guards! Yeah, guards! So guards! I wish for assistance. I wish <coughs> for assistance. <laughs> oh, man. So there was a question that was asked about this in terms of the background. Is it just naturally, like, in this light? Or is there background music that's been turned off because of you know, various rules or anything like that. Oh, no, the background music will just shut off sometimes. Yeah, it's just... Oh, so it's, it's, a, it's a game thing. Quiet. Yeah. Yeah, it's a game thing. If there's ever um, something that seems really scuffed about this game, it's it's the game. The game is just like that. Come on. Okay. One thing that I wish would cut off more often is, uh... Jimmy, or Timmy saying, this is his job for Clef the Boy Chin Wonder every time you switch over to Clef the Boy Chin Wonder. Alright, so this is a five cycle, unfortunately, so we're gonna be losing some time here. That's not a huge deal. Um, this can be really hard to execute upon. I mean, doing this fight well in co op is hard enough, but in uh, a two player, one, uh, one player, two controller, it's. Uh, oh, I don't even get to know what my final time is anymore. My life's for Clash. <laughs> It crashed? Yeah. I don't know what happened. Nice. Nice. Oh, of Lost. course. This, 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 uh, it's not the big, biggest deal. So whatever time it crashed on is, is, is the time. Yeah, congrats on that's, the that's, that's how it works, It crashed right? during, it crashed before Fairy World. No, no. You can't take agree. my power away. I am the king of Fairy World. Oh, I think I hit, must have hit, like, the wrong key or something. No, I think it just crashed. <laughs> Unfortunate. You may have beat me this time, too. Yeah, but it's very world Yeah, well, we got through there. The doomsday machine is fully charged. You don't have a chance. Yeah, so, uh, that's it for 
You think we'd learn Crocker. That they I, keep, I keep forgetting that there's only like two levels leading up to Crocker in um, the new section as opposed to three that the others had. Yeah. And now, and now Jimmy Neutron just got like two levels. Um, well, like two and a half. <laughs> there's like one level with a boss tacked on to the end. And then, um, the final boss, which is Doomsday Machine. Yeah, the Doomsday Machine with all the, all the goofy sounding antagonists. It's great because they're like all just close to the ground and they don't get knocked back at all, so you just wail on them. You just wail on them. It'll be a they're fun fight. Extremely goofy sounds. It's great. I love it. All right, so I'm going to swap to Danny here for a little bit faster movement back to the portal. Now we're going inside of Goddard, the, the robot dog. Um, shout out to Goddard, who like, actually appears inside of himself, because Goddard is like the thing that you talk to to get upgrades in this game, According and he like appears in this level. The so like, I don't know how that ends up working. Um, we'll need to make our way through Goddard systems to get yeah, there. Um, there so this level is pretty interesting. It's, so this one's really fun to play co-op, but it's kind of a pain in single player, and all that is because of uh, a glitch I'm going to do that involves disconnecting a controller. Um, so, so, so basically, yeah, so basically, these these like nuts right here, um, you toss them into this purple goop, and the nut just like creates a bubble, and you bounce on the bubble to like get throughout the level. Uh, so some of the nut placements are a bit inconvenient, so we do a trick here. That, that involves disconnecting a controller where we can uh, have Timmy sort of warp over to us while he's holding a nut. So we can carry it from that first section all the way over here. Yeah, so there's that, that sort of uh, big uh, wing nut down there that you're normally supposed to shrink with uh, Jimmy's shrink ray. And then um, you uh, go all the way down there and you toss it into this thing and then you climb all the way back up. That's really slow. It's a huge pain, but instead there's a nut right there at the beginning, so you can just grab it and carry it throughout the rest of the level. And then this one we can just skip by jumping over it with Danny. Uh, but while he's over here, I'm going to swap over to Timmy and set up the glitch again here. Um, yeah, this is much easier in co-op because you don't have to stand there as Danny getting pelted by fleas. <laughs> can by the can way. Danny fall off? Uh, yeah, I don't think it warps him back. Uh, I, I don't actually know, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he can yeah, fall so off. Yeah, so this gets us the nut past here, and the whole reason is just to save me a little bit of a trip so I can fall directly onto this. Um, oh, well, that's what I was supposed to do. Oh, I can try this back up here. Yeah, this can be a little, uh, yeah, there, there we go. And that nut gives you just, uh, you, you weren't on the nut. So this nut gives just enough height. If it works. If, if it works, it, it can be a bit finicky depending on the placement. It might need to be placed a little oh, further. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just take it safe. And we are just going to all fall into the pit. Um, and we'll go yeah. ahead and... <clears throat> Let's swap to Danny. Not a big deal. I just wanted to try to show that off, but not a huge deal. We're going to set up the glitch again, so uh, Timmy's just chilling out there with a nut in his hand. And then we're going to go make our way up here just by punching. And then there's normally a wing nut that you're supposed to get all the way up there. Um, I almost just pointed to it on screen. I have such a bad habit of doing that whenever I'm explaining <laughs> stuff. I'm like, yeah, look right there at this uh, <laughs> monitor that's oh, in I front of me. I do that all the time myself. It's when so, I'm it's so yeah, I frustrating. I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the last time you're gonna be seeing me do one of those handoffs with Timmy. Um, the last one we need to do um, is just going to be um, right here. We don't really need to do a complicated handoff yeah. or anything like that. We'll just warp him over here. If I get here quickly enough, I can sometimes make this cycle. Nice, I made it. Ooh, yeah, it's nice. nice. Yeah. <clears throat> And we'll go over here to Danny and get over here early. Very and then while nice. I'm over here, nice. uh, I can go ahead and swap to SpongeBob. And then what we're going to actually do is a slightly faster setup in order to get object displacement glitch. So normally we just let the bomb blow up in SpongeBob's hand, but if he carries it into a loading zone, uh, then it will also just auto like make him drop the bomb, but keep his displaced hitbox. And so that's another way we can set it up. So then on my other controller, I'm going to go ahead and swap to Danny, and we're going to go out of bounds. Um, 
and I'll let Drunkle cover why this is super broken. <clears throat> yeah, so basically, um, this next section is sort of like the indoorsy section. You gotta fight through a couple of rooms, and then you get to Goddard's sort of memory processing, you know, like, room or whatever. And <clears throat> there's like four different memories, I guess, of like different characters. It's basically like mini trial challenge things. And you have to just complete them by like collecting four or five different objects. And then once all of them are done, the door to the boss opens up. Instead, we can put out of bounds here. And this big orb right here, uh, I, I know you guys have been waiting for that word, orb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so this big orb right here holds one of the memories and there's four of them. So we can navigate into the one of them, enter the loading zone for it, so this skips us straight to the brain, and then, by just walking off the edge and holding in, we can avoid a kill plane there, go out of bounds, and we have a couple of zones for the Wow. Uh, so that skips the entire second half of level. That level is massive. That level's really long. Um, yeah, this level is huge casually, but... Uh, Thanks to the miracles of Out of Bounds and carrying nuts uh, off screen, uh, yeah. we can cut down on the time a ton. Uh, so, big shout out to Goddard. And also, it's uh, Giant Flea time. Uh, yeah. This boss, this boss is kind of like Plankton in the fact that there's not really any way to speed it up. Um, um, I'm going to be going for is charge attacks with Timmy here. Oh, I missed it. That stinks. Yeah, he will he will jump away if you uh get, get too up in his business like Yeah, that. those charge attacks deal a boatload of damage. So that's the yeah, big reason it, why we play on New Game Plus is like these charge attacks all do a heck load of damage. Yeah, it's it's um, it's stupid. But now he's gonna go. Uh, one one annoying thing about the flea is uh, every now and then he will jump up there and start healing. And you have to go hit that drum to sort of like, I guess that's the eardrum. Haha, <laughs> I get it. Uh, <clears throat> you have to hit that, and it knocks him off balance, and he stops regenerating health. And then you just start wailing on him again. Did we do charged attacks last time we did a co-op run, Jaxler? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. Um, we're, we're not, we're, we're that's something I've that. only really started recently implementing. Yeah, we gotta start doing that at GDQ. Yeah. <laughs> like we said before. We will likely be running a lot of this at GDQ, so please come up to us in person and we will teach you this game. Yeah, I'm gonna be a bit careful here because my card is pretty low HP. Yeah, um, if 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 there's a just wiped. <laughs> yeah, this this fight, there's a lot of fleas jumping around that shoot at you, and he lets off a shockwave. And NPCs, they might jump off each other's heads, but they will not jump to avoid that. So <clears throat> it. You need you want a lot of spare lives because you will lose a lot of them. It's I it's see, a real pain. I see, I see a lot of fleas on screen attacking stuff like that, but I haven't seen one that plays bass guitar yet. <laughs> True. Well played. <sighs> yeah, we've also tried to like go out of bounds here to see if we could skip this. Uh, nada, nothing in any yeah, of any sort. <laughs> Yeah, we've tried a lot of stuff. But hey, if you can find something for both this fight and Plankton, uh, please tell us. Like I said, firm handshake. <laughs> oh, we got him. Okay. Oh, so, that's nice. only, that, so that's only two big hop phases as well. That's pretty good. Um, that's, that's a yeah, decent that's, fight. That's a solid fight, yeah. And now we're coming up to Calamitous's lair and the Doomsday <laughs> Machine. Now, um, you may be thinking, oh no, GDQ goofed their audio. I can't hear what Calamitous is saying in the next cutscene coming up. Uh, incorrect. He just talks like that. He talks very, very quiet, and it's really kind of charming. <laughs> yeah, enjoy this cutscene, everybody. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Professor, we are here. I was trying to close out of a file folder window, but I couldn't because the X button was hidden underneath the live split window, which is crashed. <laughs> Truly unfortunate. Um, yeah, so how many of you guys can hear Calamitous right now? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's that guy. What a homie. Retro <laughs> Commence in five minutes and counting. I love I love Timmy's face. <laughs> It's so good. It's so Bungo good. Is pretty nice too. They they've all got some pretty some pretty quality 
facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan. So I actually pulled up a text uh, text file on my computer, which has the order of the buttons that I need to press. The way that this fight oh, works. You still have that saved? Nice. I did. I did. Well, I had to rewrite it because I deleted it by accident. Because um, every time I write it up and we do co-op, I always end up deleting it by accident. Um, <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, anyway, so um, so I have an order written down for the order I have to press these buttons. Um, but I'll let uh, Dunkle go ahead and kind of explain how this fight's going to play out. Yeah, so basically, um, there's four different sections, each one uh, with a switch that you have to pull that basically drops the shield of a specific villain, and each one is um, sort of blocked by an ability from a different person. Like this one, you can only crack it through the ghostly whale, <clears throat> and that lets you get to Vlad. It lowers his shield. So basically, there's a optimal order that we have figured out of hitting these switches to rotate it, to uh, get to specific um, platform, uh, get to specific platforms, and then you have to do the first finish? three, and before the last one, Are you then this? this opens up. Yeah, this is. Is he not taking any damage? No, he's not. Glad. Hello. Let me Hello? go back and see if I actually pulled the switch. You did. I saw his his shield drop. He's got no no purple on his thingy. That is messed up. This game sucks. <laughs> we've, we've never actually seen that happen before. Um, it's still not working. What is going on? Oh, uh, no. I, I'm going to go ahead and reset the level. Um, this is kind of... Yeah, I don't know if this is necessarily really rude and valid, but, like, like I, I've never seen that before. I, I have legitimately yeah, never normally, seen that happen before. Normally, they've got massive hitboxes, and you can even hit them, like, through the Doomsday Machine, like, from the other side of the, uh, the little inner circle where it is. But this time he's just not taking any damage, and that's yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, that means we have to watch the cutscene again. I'm sorry, y'all. I've I, never I think, seen that happen. I think I think you mean fortunately. Fortunate. <laughs> Fortunate. Hey, you, get to try, you get to try to hear Calamitous yeah, again. To watch the cutscene again. This is all going according to plan. Yeah. <clears throat> In jail. Was doing no damage to Vlad a part of your master plan? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, sorry, I, I had to throw the Bane post in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, and we get to see Timmy's beautiful face again. Crashing this game. Uh. <laughs> That's really unfortunate, too, because I was curious to see how good this run would have ended up being, but... I said the thing. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. <clears throat> oh, no, Danny, I assure you. Yeah, I mean, we probably couldn't hit Vlad because of all that ghost energy. He's got that unlimited ghost energy. Oh, man. I love the little bubble they have Plankton put in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Calamitous is sitting on three pillows! I never noticed that. That's really funny. Man, what status confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Calamitous, honestly. He's he's such a dork, and I love him. He's he's great. Just the way he I love talks that for him. about his his entire master plan. I love it. I love Calamitous. Big Calamitous supporter here. <clears throat> All right, let's Please see. Work. His, uh, it works! Yeah! yeah! Let's go! There we go. The boss works. Let's go! <laughs> the game didn't break this time. Oh yeah. All right, so now we just, we just get to wail on him. You see how far away Timmy's standing, but uh, Cleft's chin is unstoppable. So uh, nothing like as small as metal is going to like stop him from hitting Vlad. So, oh my goodness, the frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's how it be. It would just be like that sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, so this one, you got to put a bubble bomb down. So this is the SpongeBob thing, and it's going to drop playing things with portal. And just the whale on him now, and then next up will be um, uh, Timmy, Timmy Turner, and then uh, Jimmy. <clears throat> so that's on the right of gates. And again, I'm looking at a text document I have on my computer to know which way to yeah. go. M memorizing this was like way too much to ask. So yeah, we so we just wrote it down. down. Here's like yellow. Remember, friends, work smarter, not harder. That's true. Yeah. Yes, we can do that. 
As, as an RPG speedrunner, notes are always a great thing. I, I used to run Pokemon Red, and I would just have the route doc open, and I would just like keep tabbing back to it like every now and then, <laughs> just because there's there's yeah. always so much to remember. RPG speedruns are hard. Big big respect to anyone who runs RPGs. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we had to freeze the cage there, and now we get to wail on Crocker and listen to his uh, amazing sounds. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> it's great. And now the little force fields are down, so we can get to Calamitous' thing after we shift some platforms around. And uh, and we get to hear Calamitous' sounds, where he just goes like, Nye-nye. Nye-nye. <laughs> Whatever, whatever sound he makes, as he just like snap. That's over. a sound, though. No, it is a sound. It is a sound. It, it do be like that. <clears throat> I so can't this, believe Jimmy lived. This button is the one time that we use the football helmet. And any uh, percent, this is the only reason you get it too, which is the funniest part. Yeah. Like, it, luckily, it's at the very start of Crocker's Fortress, so we, you can just yeah. grab it before you do the clip. If it was inside the fortress, I would be so uh, Time is coming up on final hit, by the way. Yeah, as soon as Calamitous runs out of health, it uh, runs over. Three in time? Four cycle. Time. Nice. GG. GG's. Just under 117. That's actually hysterical, considering <laughs> what happened. <laughs> that could have been, 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 been close um, yeah, if I didn't have to reset the, the boss fight, actually. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Also, way underestimate, so I'm not complaining. Yeah, um, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah this cutscene is also really great, too. Um, but yeah, that's Nicktoons Unite. We did it. We beat yeah. the game, even though the game in some places beat us as well. Um, yeah, as games do, as games and do. beat my life split as well. It is still frozen. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, GG's everybody. Um, yeah, so yeah, I guess now is probably a good time for shout outs. Um, I'd like to shout out the Nicktoon speedrunning community. Um, there's a lot of people in there um, that specialize in like specific games like Battle for Vicina Island, Unite, like me and Drunk will do, uh, Toy Bots and stuff like that. So there's a Nicktoons community Discord on speedrun.com. If you go to any like leaderboard for any Nicktoons game, it should get you the link to there. And people would be more than willing to help you out learning the game. Um, yeah. yeah. So shout out to, well, again, Shirengu and Hertz. Oh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. They are, I feel like the, the community's been growing a little bit recently. I've seen some new people on that server, so it's always good to see more people trying out the game. Yeah, like shout out to Crow, who's been picking up Glitchless recently. Yeah, yeah, for Putting sure. some numbers up on the board. Um, yeah, and like we said, shout out to Tringu and Hertz, because without them, we wouldn't be doing this, frankly, incredible run. Uh, so they, they pioneered the whole thing, so uh, huge props to them. Yeah, um, I guess his final shout-outs. Uh, Drunkle, thank you for joining me on the mic. Was, oh, anytime. This was amazing. Anytime. <laughs> Still kind of can't believe we got this. <laughs> Still can't believe we somehow got to show this on the GDQ stream. Still kind of mind blowing to me for how <laughs> sus this game can be at times. Um, yeah, uh, thank you Vesper for having us. Um, I guess as a final thing, if you want to follow us, you can find me at twitchtv jaxr one I run like way too many different like weird obscure games. Um, this is one of them, but I'll also be running uh, Word and Melody of the Undergrowth at this upcoming GDQ. Uh, Monday night at like three in the morning. So if you want to uh, central, so like if you want to stay up, you again, you check that out. Uh, Drunkle, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash drunkle underscore Titus. Same way it's spelled on the layout here. Uh, when I'm not running um, Nicktoons Unite, which is most of the time, I'm running uh, Ocarina of Time. I'm running the Began in the Western category. Uh, sometimes I'll run like Goldeneye and Mario Kart Double Bash. I will be likely on the couch for Jaxler's Warden Melody of the Undergrowth run at SGDQ. Yeah. So you will get to see, us, but see this incredible dynamic duo uh, <laughs> in person at SGDQ. So or a despicable sure. duo, depending on who you ask. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you ask. So be sure, to, be sure to tune in to that stream, because, you know, game's done quick. It's always a blast. And if you are at the event, uh, come up to us, say hi. 
uh, we will absolutely make you learn this game. Yeah. Not, 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 not you don't even have to ask. You if will you, just be set you down in a CRT. If you come up to us <laughs> while we're playing this game, or if you like tell us that you saw our hotfix run, we will force you to learn this game. <laughs> we will wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing one of those days. Yep. Oh, you <laughs> better. better. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hunt them down. That's the rules. You're, you're <laughs> please do. I don't write the rules. Do. <laughs> uh, yeah. We and do make the rules. So. Yeah. And speaking of games done quick, it is in four days. But from now until July fifteenth. GDQ's revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders. And of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can go to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in looking at the live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you're watching us on Twitch, you can check out the YouTube page at youtube.com slash games done quick to check out any of the runs that you may have missed or any of the hot fix shows that you may have missed as well. But we're not done yet. We're going to take a small break here to get things set up for our next run, which is going to be No Straight Roads. It's going to be a great rock talk style music rhythm, not rhythm, music game. I, I should know this. I, I run this game. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to take a small, we're going to take a small little break here. This is a great time to get up, stretch, get some, uh, get some of that hydration going. Always remember to hydrate. And we'll be right back here in a minute with No Straight Roads. All right, welcome back to the bargain bin. I'm still your host, Midnight Vesper. Hope you all are enjoying everything so far. Just a couple of announcements. Don't forget, Summer Games Done Quick is coming up in four days. That's going to be June 26th through July 3rd. Price submissions are open. Go to gamesonequick.com for more info. And of course, from now until July 15th, GDQ's revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will be donated. To or be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders one time, and of course, if what games are you know what games are you interested in? Go ahead and tweet at Games Done Quick and let us know what you're excited about the most for Summer Games Done Quick. And of course, now we have one of my favorite games that came out recently, No Straight Roads, with a good friend of mine, Moist Rock. How are you doing, Moist Rock? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. So um, this is No Straight Roads. So as you can see by the title, this is actually the Encore Edition. So the original No Straight Roads, which is what we played, I think, two years ago, back in December for uh, West Coast Weekend. So this is now the re-release. This is on Steam now. And so there's a bunch of quality of life changes, a few tweaks here and there for uh, some of the bosses, approaches, and just all around in general. And um, I'll be honest, the game has been kind of, you know, slow, but kind of uh, kind of dead at this point. But, you know, we're just I've been looking to keep improving on the run. And so I hold the world record for both the any percent and for the no major glitches category. And so um, I can do a bit more of the introduction as we start the game because it's going to be like an auto scroller. So time's going to start when uh, we select the amount of characters. So yeah, I'm down to do this. OK, and then time's going to start in three, two, one, go. All right. So uh, as I mentioned, this is the a new edition on Steam. It's about 25 bucks now. And so um, this was made by a Malaysian studio called Metronomic. So this is the only this is like their main IP that they made right now. And they are actually making a second game uh, there. It's called Own Day Own Day. So it's another like, well, not sure if it's rhythm yet, but it's definitely an action adventure game that they're introducing. So right now. We're just gonna, this is like the tutorial, or not live, this is the tutorial section right now. So I'm just gonna spam my roll button here because sometimes the game can drop your inputs here. And right there, as you can see, I have a sort of an air dash there, but it's actually not. So that's one of the first uh, major techs that you learn when you play the game, that's just called a ledge roll. So as long as you roll off of a ledge pretty close, you actually maintain the momentum from the original dash, and then you get a bit of a float. So that's going to be useful for the first approach of the game, which is a platforming section. And then we, if we combine that with another air dash, you essentially get two air dashes. So right now, a bit of a slow um, auto scroller in a sense. So as the name implies, or you know, as this genre is a rhythm game, uh, the enemy attack patterns you'll see go in line with the music. So 
for the majority of the run, there's a lot of consistency in terms of knowing when attack patterns come out, when to dodge, when to do other stuff. There is a bit of RNG though. The main RNG that we'll see later on throughout the run kind of involves uh, certain uh, different attack patterns that you could potentially get, specifically in the Inu fight, which is the third boss, and also note drop placements. There are some note drop placements that can absolutely, I would say, kind of kill your run, but mainly just lose you a few seconds. Because sometimes they can go out of bounds and then you can't grab the notes. But right now, it's just a bunch of dodging. We're playing as Mayday right now. Uh, Mayday is the heavy hitter of the band, and she's also the guitarist. Her attacks tend to be slow, but they're also strong. So, we're now just waiting for the opportunity to start smacking these robots. Just so like that. For, yeah, for someone who may not know anything about rhythm, or in the sense of like maybe hasn't played an instrument, is this is this a hard game to get into, or is it something that if you don't know much about rhythm or counting, you can still play it really well? I would say um, if you don't know rhythm that much, I think that, uh, Metron did a good job of making this pretty uh, beginner friendly because the early like the early stages when you play the game, you know, you can just button mash, you can do whatever you want, and then you can get through the game pretty easily. But in the instance of speed running. It's actually a lot more rewarding to know how to like parry on time and how to do a useful tech situation that we're going to learn with the other characters soon. But now, now we're going to do a celebration or the transformation. So a little fun fact about these transformations, we're going to be pressing Y. So any of these prompts here, we're going to hold. So another fun fact about this, which is a cool detail, is that so this transformation music is basically another uh, there's another track layer layer onto the original beat so there's a guitar solo and then a drum solo for zook and now i'm about to show you the new and improved zook jump cancels so before you remember if you watched the last run i did something along these lines and i got a fast attack however i don't need to do a jump instead so you see this fast attack right here so you see if i spam f like this just by itself it's slow but zook can actually jump out of his any of his combo hits so if we take advantage of this and tech, right after you jump, you actually reset the counter to one, and you remove the uh, the attack speed limiter, and you can do stuff like that. And so, hold on, let me just do this. All right, perfect. And you can take that a step further now because you can see you are just able to continuously link this combo over and over. And the best part is, if you want to think about it. It's actually a, uh, a rhythmic beat that I'm using. So it's attack to set it up and then jump, attack, attack. I'm doing it in a triplet pattern. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. You see, it's just a, hey, as a rhythm game, why not just add a rhythmic uh, mechanic into the game unintentionally? That's cool. All right. Well, and I know and I know that uh, when this game first came out, a lot of developers and voice actors were very active within the community of Twitch streamers, do you think they're aware of, of that type? Oh yeah, I think uh, because Taja is actually one of the moderators of our Discord, so she actually talks to one of the developers, which is, uh, I think it's, his name's Han, but because uh, she asked them directly, like, if Zoo Jump Cancels were going to come over into the next game, and they were well aware of what this mechanic was, and they kept it during development. So yeah, they were... I'm happy that developers kept a very useful speed run mechanic into the game because it's actually very crucial for a majority of this run. So as you can see, this is the finale. So all we have to do is just a bunch of uh, gauntlet challenges against all these enemies. So it's always gonna be the same pattern and where the places are gonna drop. So we're gonna go right, left, right, left. So it's gonna be a one bot here. Oh, that's kind of bad RNG, that's fine. Sometimes the notes can be a little funky with how they wanna like orbit around the enemies, but that's it's only like a... Oh, that's that's unfortunate. The only I mean, bad part... Yeah, sorry. See, this, is a, this is a kind of music-based game, so it, the game being funky kind of fits. Yeah, that's true. But um, what's it called? Sometimes uh, if you miss time the zoop jump cancel, maybe if you're too slow with the attack after the jump, then you'll just get what I got there, which is just a regular jump, and obviously that's not what you want to do because you lose time. So also, if you're kind of glossing over... or I didn't even talk about the story, but essentially... We were um, trying to audition to become a new NSR artist, but uh, yeah, we just failed because we are rock. Because, you know, we suck, but that's fine. 
So we're gonna uh, do another kind of obstacle section. We're just gonna be rolling around as Nade to the left here. And you're actually gonna see the background of the overworld, which we will be passing around soon, or like going throughout the game. So we're just gonna keep rolling here. And this time I can actually properly time my my rolls this time since it doesn't drop the input. So ideally, you don't wanna see any walk animation. You just wanna be able to just keep rolling, rolling. And right there, this is part of the background of where we're going to go. And by rolling, you skip a couple of the uh, cutscenes that are in there, correct? Yes. Uh, the initial cutscene where the blimp is, as long as you don't walk and you just keep rolling, you can skip that cutscene. I believe in the original version of the Switch, that was not skippable. So, you know, that's not fun. We just don't want, we just want to keep moving. It's a speedrun after all. But right now, we're at these TVs and we're going to figure out that the whole thing was actually rigged. What a surprise. So that does bring apart. I know when the game first came out, uh, the builds on the Xbox and the Switch version were different from the PS4 and the PC version. Has that all been fixed in the Encore edition? Well, because the Encore edition is only on Steam, then technically, yes, because it's all in one version, at least. So at least they made it more consistent in a sense. Although they did do a lot of patches here and there. I'd say there were like five patches before they stopped uh, patching the game, which is fine. So the reason why we can't go left is because there's an invisible wall there. Now we can uh, go up. So ideally, we're going to see our character zip. Oh, that's an early zip, which is kind of fine. Um, the problem with an early zip like that is that you have to, the cutscene does not start until both characters are here, and we can't control Mayday at that point. So the closer the zip is to the, the checkpoint area, the better. So right now, we're about to go to our first boss, and I have to emphasize, there's going to be an ep epilepsy warning on the last phase, so just be careful. I'll... Try and warn, but uh, maybe midnight can also warn the people. But yeah. this, okay, this yeah. is the first. This is the DJ sub. This is the first boss. So right here, I'm using the jump cancel tech in order to kill the disco balls. They are gonna drop notes, and we need a total of eleven, and that ends the phase. Now on the phase two, it's essentially the same thing, but this time we have planets. Mm -hmm. It's and fine. then if you notice here on the top there with the rock versus EDM, the mo the, the better you get in this particular, um, in this game, you'll see how it switched on over to rock. Now the music has shifted to more of a rock atmosphere. Oh, a little slow there. That's fine. Ooh, that's a little bad, bad RNG because you want to keep the planets as close as possible. This is okay now. Okay, I should have enough notes here. All right, epileptic warning. So close your eyes if you're not used to flashing lights. Yeah, this is where it's on. Wow, we're here already. Yep, already. <laughs> so I would say. That was kind of a slow phase two, but it was a really good phase three. And this part, you can't really do much to, you know, go on ahead. So this is just a, a parry tutorial in a sense, again. And I will say, even though the game's been out for so long, I still appreciate the music. The music is still a really good selling point of the game. And if you don't even buy the game, that's fine. I would just recommend listening to the soundtrack, but because it's really good. Yeah, and the like the entire soundtrack is on Spotify as well, or at least at one point it was, and it had all the remixes of the songs, all the different versions of them, all of that just built into that, and it's it's great just to kind of drive. It's great driving music. Oh, okay. All right, and that's DJ stuff right there. It's honestly probably one of the most difficult fights in the game. I will say, I think the fights generally get easier the further you go along, which is kind of funny. So, we're gonna skip a cutscene here. I'm gonna guess the time is probably 2.35. 2.36, ooh, that's rough. Uh, the best I've ever gotten was 2.30 2 exact. So, generally, the amount of time that can be saved is based on the RNG of the planet rotations. So, if you notice during the fight, like, uh, phase two and three, uh, DJ Sub will try and, or he attacks with the planets and then the planets will halt and then you can't hit them for a while. So the issue with what we had in phase three was uh, the closest planet, which is what we always go for, 
it was the first or it didn't end up rotating which is what you kind of want to do because it stops it in its tracks and resets the damage counter so just because of that i had to keep running around looking for a new planet it was a little rough but honestly can't be that it's not the worst that could happen and we just have to go through all these uh little collectibles that we just got there's a skippable cutscene here all right and there we go so now we are going to meet a very interesting fan who's going to aid us in our adventure right now. And we're also going to be checking the overworld right now. So something to talk about, because uh, somewhere in the chat said that they noticed the Encore edition looks a little bit more impressive. Uh, I kind of agree. And the one, the other thing, if, if I'm correct, when, the, when this was announced, uh, you see a lot of stuff, more stuff on the walls. That's all fan art, correct? Yes. Uh, I guess we can mention it now, yes. So, there's gonna be a cutscene that's not as skippable, but basically, if they're gonna introduce that, uh, they put in a lot of fan art for the game. But the thing is, this isn't just, like, r random fan art that they found. So, Metronomic on their Discord actually requested the fans. They said, hey, we're making the Encore Edition. Uh, we want your artwork in our game to, uh, you know, just give back to the community. And you can even see, like, on the far left, there's, like, there's... Uh, artwork and we'll be playing you can put that on your guitar case to unlock it you just have to look directly at the artwork and then uh, you get in your customizable menu so yeah and as you can see uh, that was our fan cliff right there he's gonna be helping us he's gonna aid us on our journey and he's also gonna tell us which NSR artist to beat up all right Cliff's, so, a, Cliff's a great person Cliff yeah. is a great person there's nothing wrong with him he's such a he's such a good lad all right. Yeah. Before you go, All right. You so second boss is going to be Sai here. If you see me shaking a lot, I am spamming just the B button so much right now. This is actually the most physically intensive part of the game for me. So that's funny as that is. All the all that button mashing. Yep. So now we're going to doing uh, just the standard sewer cycle. So first we need to feed Ellie. If we feed Ellie five times, we get to go to a fast travel or we unlock the fast travel station, which will be obviously useful for skipping a lot of the walking during the overworld. We're also going to be getting a lot of upgrades right now. Ooh. All right. So upgrade list. Also, yeah, sorry. Uh, upgrade list is double jump. So obviously that's what it sounds like. We have a meter gain mechanic where when we stand still, uh, we're going to be able to gain meter during the boss fights. And that'll be, use that'll be more useful than you think because uh, there going to be a lot of downtime. And then for Mayday, we unlock a charge attack one. So charge attacks got changed in the sense that you can't hold them indefinitely now, but they have super armor and they're pretty strong. And then we also got a uh, note increase upgrade. And then for Zook, we just upgraded his combo hits to five instead of three. And so I noticed you picked up a sticker to kind of like help boost your characters. Is that something that we are implementing now for the mm, speed run or? Nope, unfortunately stickers nope. still are kind of negligible, you know. The good old 2%, 4%, like 5%. Unfortunately, it's just not worth the amount of time. Also, something, if you watched the previous run, is that I have not equipped the mod yet in the garage. I'm actually going to equip it. I'll just do it now. So, they actually added a customized menu for the uh, Encore Edition. And so, the reason why we do it here is because we don't have to go through the whole text that explains how uh, mods work. So, yeah, that saves a bit of time, but some of that time is lost from like some of those unskippable cutscenes, but it's all good. And so now we're on to the approaches. The approaches are just platforming sections of the game that precede the actual boss fights. They give you a sense of the themes of the bosses, and sometimes you can even learn some of the mechanics beforehand of what the bosses could do. Oh, that's unfortunate. Ah, man. Sometimes if you, uh, like, what's it called? You have to wait for the whole roll to finish. Otherwise, uh, your impus get eaten there, just like what happened there. I tried to do a charge attack early. That's fine. Just lose, like, a second or two. And so, you have to kill a certain amount of enemies on each floor. That's indicated by the, uh, number of red circles that you can see on the gates. So, I'm always going to be killing the exact amount, except for some other stages where I built some meter. And there goes the ledge roll playing into effect. Combine that with a double jump, we can cover a lot of space to get over a lot of uh, gaps. There's that super armor going to play from the charge attacks. There's a lot of new mechanics that have been added here. 
Yeah, they all, yeah. So one of the new bots that they added was the uh, the clap bot. Those are pretty beefy bots that uh, they take a lot of damage, but we're able to generally kill them like one to two hits. There we go. Okay, we're gonna activate a respawn point early by getting far enough, and we're able to dodge that attack just by rolling. So rolls in this game have full invincibility, so you can imagine how good that is. And now here we go, some more ledge rolls with the double jumps. This is by far the hardest, I would say, and the longest approach out of the entire game. So again, really funny how a lot of the difficulty is kind of front-loaded when you're learning the game. Okay, and we're gonna... A lot of the games I speed around and do that as well, it's weird. Yeah. Alright, so that was the large attack. That's one of the abilities in the game. So you see on the top left where the arms are. So, uh, they're just basically special attacks and they burn uh, one to two bars. Oh, hmm. I can trigger it. I'm gonna trigger the thing here. Respawn, yep. We're chilling. And then the charge attack, you can see, it just makes quick work of every single boss, or mob, I should say. And another uh, different change that they did was that uh, for Zook, he actually used to have 8 meters, but now he has 4 meters for his mods. And the way they, they work differently, they're not spammable moves anymore. They're, they act more as combo finishers. We're not going to use... Or, the only one that we're going to use for Zook is going to be Arpeggio Assault until Eves. And we'll see why, but that's just a bit of foreshadowing. Now, I would say that was a decent approach besides the uh, lost input there. But now, we're going on to Sayu. This fight is also is... pretty difficult, yeah. It's difficult, but the music makes it worth it. This is probably one of the also... best tracks, yeah, just because it also has lyrics. It really just, just a cute song in general. Very good vocals by, uh... Oh, shoot, I forgot her name. Was it, like, Nikki, Sim Nikki Simmons, right? Or... Yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, James Lambino, who is, uh, EDM artist, I believe, as well. Yeah. All right, and so this whole section right here, this is just a runaway section. So right now, or not runaway, we're just running towards Sayu. So this is going to be kind of the whole theme for this boss fight. So the kind of whole idea behind Sayu is that she is a creation of four teenagers. So there's an artist, a singer, a video editor, and a mocap person. So we can't attack, attack the, uh, the main box, the health bar, until we attack destroy all the other boxes. So we're going to the mocap first. The reason why we do this is because... Sorry, hold on, let me do this. The reason why we do this is because it disables the rest of size attacks for the rest of that individual phase. So, we're gonna keep going here. The music boxes, when you disable it, it stops the... You'll see like these pink like fish bars like going around the screen. It stops them from doing like this... Like that erratic, that sporadic movement right there, but... Okay, now we're gonna switch to Mayday here. So, it is gonna look slow, but the reason why we're switching to Mayday and to attack the uh, box here is... Oh, that sucks. We want to build meter here. Okay, there we go. So, we're not gonna use Mayday until the last phase now. And so, you see, there. it's kind of funny how it goes into nighttime because uh, this is where the video editor gets shown off, it turns off the lights, Going to the deep sea, which is also phase three. It's so hard for me to like watch this and not sing along to the lyrics. It's it's, it's really good. Also, they have a Japanese version of this uh, as a song as well, which is pretty nice. Good touch. I would say the uh, the English version is more representative of like more pop, and then the Japanese version is more reminiscent of Vocaloid, which is honestly a really smart touch. So just right there, we're going to go back for the mocap, destroy that so we don't have any more complications during the rest of this phase. Then we're going to go for the music box, and then we're going to go for the mocap, or for the video editor next. So, and also each of these boxes takes 17 hits to destroy. Oh. That was a bit of a slow one. Can't really... That was a bit of annoying just because the way they position that box directly underneath one of those, uh... One of the little rising hitboxes that you just really can't avoid, so. I saw I saw this in chat that someone said they did they're grabbing their iPhone to emulate a torch stick. That's with all those in the background. It's it, it's the very the one thing that I like what Metronomic did so much is just all the little tiny details they they really threw into this. 
I mean, they fully embrace the uh, the whole like EDM culture. They kind of like always try to put a bit pivots here and there. The mute, like everything about like the music, all the like the the ambiance, the scenery is all really good. So now we are in a runaway section. This is exactly what it sounds like. We're just gonna keep running away. There's like four different stages, and during this time, Mady is gonna passively re or generate meter here. So ideally, Mady is gonna get two full bars by the time we get to the last section and then we'll switch her because we are going to use her attack to hit three boxes we're going to also size up yep so right there it's going so we have successfully gotten both of the meters now all right wow all right perfect okay yeah, good run away good, yeah and now this is the this part i'm really worried because it gets a little inconsistent so we want to get two March attacks in here, but I could potentially get hit out of the second one. Oh, what the? Uh, this isn't normal. Uh, okay. Wait. No, okay. I normally I get hit there, so okay. I'm a little worried. Please. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay. And now, two shots, two. It takes two more notes because... Oh, that sucks. Oh. Okay, it's, it's, it's all good, it's all good. Oh, I need to activate this one. Okay, we are chilling, oh, we are wow. chilling. Wow. Please kill, please kill. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay, it's been wow. so long since I've gotten a two, a two pair like that. Okay, okay. That was so, impeccable. I would say that was a pretty optimal Sayu fight. Some, like, tendly a bit about RNG, but overall, I would say that's, that's really good. That's really good, because, um, I mean, you can see, it's so hard for me to explain because I'm talking, because it's, this is honestly super intensive, like, what I'm trying to do, but uh, the idea there is, um, because we throw the Marsh Sacks there, because it's going to hit all three of the boxes, so it sets them all to two note HP, so we grab the three notes from the ball, we grab three more notes from the shell that we kill, so then that kills all the notes, so which exposes the main HP bar, then we need to activate <laughs> the two transformable turrets, so because of that, um, it, it passively attacks the main attack bar, while we're also parrying, because the parrying does damage as well. So, two turrets and two parries will just kill the... kill end the fight entirely. So, yeah. Just very and optimized our, movement and just optimized attack patterns, yeah. Yeah. And then our next boss fight is... Um, one of the most entertaining... <laughs> Uh, entertaining, well, potentially for me, <laughs> it's so rough. Like, MMG is great because you get to experience the entire game, but the one part I always hate about it, I'm sorry, I cannot stand this next boss fight just because of it. It's an auto scroller, but I can use this, I can use that time to talk about, uh, I can do a little, uh, a short version of a something solved video where I can talk about and shout out a bunch of people in the community who have helped. Um, optimized and have contributed to the run. Whew, okay. Also, it is very hot where I am right now, so... And that stressful fight right there doesn't help. But right now, off the cliff. We're gonna feed Ellie again, so this is gonna be the second time. We're gonna... I guess the good thing about uh, the next boss is that it's gonna reset the counter again. So now we're gonna leave. Do we have any Ellie emotes in chat? Uh, I don't know. That'd be great if there was. Okay. We're going to talk to Zam here. And by talk, I mean we're kind of forced to talk to him because we really don't want to. Okay, there we go. All right, we're going to go. Also, Zam has two pairs of headphones, and I don't understand why. He needs one for each ear, I think. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. All right. But technically, he would have... Okay, I'm not going to go into it. Yeah, don't worry. He has four ears <laughs> somehow. Okay. So anyway, this is DK West. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Zook's brother right here. And uh, this is basically reverse Guitar Hero. Instead of trying to hit these little red notes, we're actually just going to be avoiding all of them. So the unfortunate part is that this goes on for six minutes. So <laughs> it's really time consuming. And it's you can see why this sucks for energy, right? Because, you know, you have to deal with this. There's not going to be any time loss. But then if you mess up in the next section, then it's like, great. I have to do this entire like 30 minute like you know, 30 minute like portion of the run all over again and still fight DK. So, you know, it is what it is. But um, yeah, I guess at this point, I'll take the time to um, shout out a lot of people in the community. Um, 
since, you know, even, this game is AC span back three years ago, and we've grown, halted, and then grown a bit again. So, first off, the first person is, sorry, I'm going to butcher this name, but, uh, Crozies. So, they were the actual, they were the original person who kind of started speedrunning the game. They organized Discord, organized speedruns.com, and is also one of the moderators for uh, speedruns. So, uh, great person. Also, they found a bunch of out of bounds tricks in the game. So, because of them, they were a like the entire community was able to discover like the existence of out of bounds, and then we applied that to other portions of the game, and then also for the any percent route. And the next person, King Sea Salt, he was the commentator for West Coast Weekend. Another one of the OG runners of the game early for doing any percent and NMG. And he was the person who discovered the original version of the Zook Jump Cancel. So because of that discovery, we're able to advance it further. Uh, next person, uh, Taja. So Taja is, uh, I believe she's UK, Europe, something, something around there. But um, she's another runner of the game. She still runs it every now and then. Mainly does the uh, boss rerun. Cat or rematch category, but she was the one that had mentioned how Ellie works, that that mechanic even exists to me, because I was streaming, and then she said, why don't you just feed Ellie? So, because of her, we found out that Fast Shop exists, and that saved around, I would honestly say, 50 to a minute, 50 seconds to a minute. And then, Zuka. Zuka is our Japanese runner. Uh, they have been my rival for basically the entirety of this game. Uh, he, or they took the, um, the any percent category in the original release and then i always had the nmg category but we always pushed each other uh further and further and then i ended up taking the any percent for this version of the game and nmg as well and of course you gotta think midnight vesper of course he's the one who helped organize this and then he's a one og runner of the game always had nice conversations always talked about different strategies it's been great and then in the next upcoming approach for Gimu, a random user that just came to our Discord named Squid, Squiddy Odd. So they discovered an outbound trick that we're going to use in the next approach, and it's going to skip a majority of it. So we're going to get it done in like a minute. And the last person, of course, is Rex. So Rex helped conceptualize and figure out the out of bounds trick for the finale of the game. So I don't even think Vesper knows about this. Maybe. No, but, I don't know about that one so at all yet. <laughs> it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really stressful one to do because it's literally at the end of the game where you're stuck in a little box. But yeah, because of Rex, we were able to figure out that there was an out of bounds. But also Zuka did a lot of. Since Zuka is like the second, uh, honestly, like me and Zuka are like both like equally matched. But they um, helped finalize or like improve the version of the out of bounds and then as well as the zoop jump cancels so a lot of what we know now is because of the japanese runners especially an old one named momo frog another top uh, runner back in the original version and unfortunately as much as i mentioned all those people we don't have that many runners that are like runs listed on the encore edition right now but all i'm gonna say is hey there's always a time to uh you know get your name up on there just join the discord uh start, start getting some runs in or even just do the solo runs honestly you don't have the time to do hour like 30 minute runs and just do like the quick five to like three minute like solo levels that we can or that are available and we don't technically have a dual google doc but um it was one i made a guide on how to play the game but that was all the way back for the 1.4 version not the encore just because you know, games are slow, not that many runners. But hey, you have any questions about any of the mechanics, any of the, you know, how to fight anything, or yeah, how anything works, then just just hit me up. Because I still appreciate the game for what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, see, unfortunately, this is, <laughs> this, is the dual, this is the duality of DK West, right? It's like... But DK West is the best. That's what the song yeah, says. Yeah, it's... Yeah, this is, this is great. <laughs> I, I love I love DK West. Copium. But, like, casually, it's actually really entertaining because they actually mix different languages in the actual song, which is really kind of unique. That's uh, true. I mean, you can definitely appreciate it as a as a casual player, but when you're a speedrunner, man, this is just yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, please let it end, let it end, let it end. But yeah, that's just six minutes right there. So originally in the original, or yeah, in the original version of this game, we would take damage so that we get the least amount of rank possible. But we actually want more fans for this 
uh, run, because we're actually going to be running a slightly different build. So, we also have the ultimate duet, but we are not going to be using that because we are never going to be able to pull that off. So, we're going to beat up a child now. So, uh, don't worry about it. We're going to beat Ellie here, and now we're going to go on to our second uh, set of upgrades. So, as soon as... Okay, there we go. Alright. So, first one, we're getting our air dash. Whenever repair, we get three notes on the other partner. We're getting the second charge attack, longer transformations, more note drops, and more notes. It's scary, and we're getting Zook's uh, combo extension finisher. So, now that all that. We're talking to this loser again because he just wants to keep eating up more of our time, so. There we go. And as you can see, the air dashes really fast. So, we're gonna just keep maneuvering throughout the overworld. We're gonna optimize as many, or yeah, optimize the routing so that we have as many, uh, what's called ledge rolls and these little air dashes as possible. Unfortunately, I missed that. So, as I have to say, I'm a great runner. No cap. So, <laughs> moving through, the, through here, face the vinyl. And now we're going to lock the Asuka district, and then we're just going to head over. So normally, when if you don't switch characters there, you're actually stuck or you're stuck and are unable to do anything. But you can actually switch characters there, and then you are able to uh, move into position for the next part. So now we're in Yinu's district. So what I'm about to show you is definitely a pretty huge glitch. I know some people in the previous run we're questioning like why is this allowed well honestly we were like discussing about it when it was first discovered whether or not we should put this out of bounds trick in the game but a majority of the community kind of wanted it just because it adds um it adds variety into the game so as you can see i actually just jumped right past the death uh gate right there so oh that really sucks uh oh okay that's actually the first time i messed oh, up uh -oh. that, yeah that's a that's a time loss that's fine so basically what i've just done there is i've um skipped the death plane there so that way we're able to move underneath the map and so it just kind of gives you an idea of how the approaches work because normally you have to transform the the checkpoints or the teleporters in order to move to the next floor but because we didn't attack or finish the first floor then nothing else gets triggered so and this also gives us an insight of how the out of bounds or like how the duo mechanic works so nor what happens is when you create enough distance between zook and mayday the other is always going to try and spawn right behind um right behind the other but because what's called they're always going to look behind first and then they're going to spawn above us so we're literally going underneath the map and they're always going to spawn directly above us okay well that part was fine the first part unfortunately i messed it up yeah. but see that's a really sure. fast approach do you look for specific um, triggers to know exactly when to switch, or is it just a like you just kind of yeah, know? Kind of nah, there are definitely specific triggers. Or like there's like there's um visual cues I can use, so it's not as uh, hard as it looks. So uh, I attack too early. That's fine. Okay, this is also going to be a different version of how we're fighting the boss. And normally, I'm putting in the idol into meter skill into use right now. But I'm actually not going to use the first large attack here. I'm actually going to save it for um, the next two phases. So we're just going to gather all these notes. It's going to take like five sets of notes in order to do this. It's kind of bad. And this is where that RNG factor comes into play with the placement of the notes. Like, you don't really want to keep moving left or right because you want to optimize the amount of mirror gain you get. So right here, we're going to want to transform all three of these turrets. And then we're going to, these notes are going to drop more than, oh, this kind of sucks. Oh Ooh. no, yeah, see, this is this is where bad RNG gets in play. It's actually the first time I've kind of missed those two. That's fine, though. I'll get the next pair. It's going to be a little slow, and then, oh, there we go. And look at those zoop jump cancels put, going yeah, to us. Yeah, jeez. So we're going to switch to Mayday here, because her second charge attack actually hits past the barrier. So we get some initial damage for the next phase. So keep slamming. 
So we just got seven free attacks in there for free, which builds up the meter for Mayday and also just do damage that helps us for the last phase. So we're going to Mars attack here because we want to make Yinu drop as fast as possible. Uh, okay, on the right. We're going to just keep doing the same thing, activate turrets. We need more of the shootable notes to drop, but... Okay, we're going to save this though. Yeah. But... I would like her to drop. Okay, thank you. All right, and now we're going to attack again. This, this, just seeing that health just, just wow, it's just it's just gone. Yeah, and there we go. Okay, so now we have taken enough health so that it will trigger next phase when you need to drop to get. Oh, that's fine. Where is the? Okay, the turret was here. That's fine. Okay, we're gonna activate here again. I would like some meter. No, not a hot dog. That's fine. Okay, Aww. so those boxes there. This, it's not a huge time loss, but we want to guess. We're going to try and get one energy drink here because we want to build up more meter. We're going to grab the nose from here. And what's hey, in please, these boxes please. is RNG. Oh, that's, that's actually really good. I don't have it exactly yet. I'm just going to idle a bit more. Perfect. Okay. All right. We're going to eat some damage here, do a charge stack. There we go. And then wow, that's the nice. boss fight right there. Honestly, a really bad RNG. Like, honestly, wait, that was just the Sayu fight again. Really bad RNG on the first part, but good RNG on the second half. So honestly, I will take that. I'll take that yeah. to the bank. I need to stop repeating myself because I'm just I'm just in shock that I messed up that second phase terribly. But, you know. It happens. I mean, it, it does happen, but wow. The fact that it had to be the opposite sides of the map that placement is just garbage, but you can't really do much about that. Yeah. All right. Just a bit of a we have the run up now. We're just going to try and not take more damage again because we need fans for the next approach or yeah, for the next boss fight also. I will also mention this next boss fight is going to give me a heart attack because is uh, if you remember from the last run, there is a mechanic. I'm going to be talking ahead. There's a mechanic uh, where we're actually going to skip a phase of the 10 10 fight but they made uh the march attack deal less damage to the boss in general so i'll i'll, I'll re-explain it later on but we have to get four march attacks in the next fight and Oof. i'll let you know that is very That's... very strict all right but it, it, it is 10 10 so you get some great jams of 10 10 well yes but also <laughs> They just gotta be, they gotta like chill. <laughs> okay, so we just smashed Yinu's family heirloom. Guess what? We just made a, a grieving mother and a child who has, has lost their father. Yeah, we just made them even more sad. But honestly, hey, it's for the speed run. You're a part of history, don't worry. <sighs> okay, now. I just always love how that music just builds up in that, in that little chaos. The minor yeah. seconds and all of that. Yeah. The music's actually a part of the cutscene, but because we skipped it, um, the music still keeps playing, so it doesn't actually stop and play the original soundtrack. Because it actually plays like a, a really like sad or like a, I guess like a melancholy version of the main boss theme. And that's what it's supposed to be playing here, but because we just skipped that whole, uh, you know, really heartwarming moment. Because we're just trying to complete the game fast. We can't be feeling emotions here. So uh, we got on the next mod that we're going to use for Izuk, which is going to be Apresio Assault. So that is a projectile that is going to do a lot of damage, mainly for um for the Ten Ten fight. It's worth noting that Ten Ten's instrument of choice is Ten Ten dance routines. Yep, their movement is the real weapon. All right, it's for here. All right, so let's. I, I, go ahead. I am. Oh wait, I'm actually kind of lost. Sorry, I I kind of blanked out there. Okay, so we're gonna do that. All right, perfect. Sorry, I actually brain farted there so badly. But anyway, we only got two um, upgrades there. So one of them, whenever we transform any transformable objects, which is gonna be made days, uh, use. We're gonna get meter for that, and that's gonna be really good for main or for building up meter during the actual 10th fight. And then for Zook, we upgraded his combo finisher to seven hits now. So 
Not only does that increase the damage of his um, Arpeggio Assaults, but that's going to also just increase his attack range in general. Why is that happening to me, making all the small mistakes? <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna just... And you can see why Fast Travel is gonna be really useful here soon, because we get to skip all this walking back and forth, back and forth. All right, here we go. And okay. then the next thing is everyone's favorite robotic boy band. Yep. But first... Who's, whose main power is um, perplexing Mayday. <laughs> yep. Okay. So we're pausing and equipping our Pedro Assault here because there's just a text there. So we can't really do anything anyway. So as long as the text appears on the screen, we're able to go into the menu. It's going to bypass the whole, uh, you know, waiting for the invisible barrier, a barrier to go away. So it just optimizes the time. Now we're going to another pretty hard approach in the game. Okay, so we need all six notes here, because we're going to need to destroy the flybots that are in the next room. So we need to go onto this moving platform. Oh, please. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. All right, this is fine. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, okay. Now we're gonna kill this one red bot here with two charge attacks. We're gonna eat through the damage. Uh, pretty good no placement there. Oh, I, uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get average cycle here, which is fine. Okay, there we go. Oh, now that's that's like that's normal speed. There is technically a faster cycle that that saves you around a second, but it's not like it's not the worst case scenario. So. We're just going to keep moving along. We did double parry there, so now you can see Mayday is going to have six notes, and we're going to keep giving her notes for the last part of this run, or part of the approach. We're going to destroy the health of the red ball here. Next is this guy. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, it's also kind of fine. It's just sometimes Mayday won't, like, she'll spawn, like, underneath instead of go towards, like, on the upper level. So that could potentially lose you another, like, second or two. But it's not the worst. All right. Now this is the actual important part. Activate this. Activate here. And we made it to our ride. Oh, okay. Such an intense section. For 10, 10. Get it? In yeah. 10 for intent? Nah. Dang, you got me good. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, man. That was a... Okay, I'm losing like two seconds again, but it's fine. Uh. You can, like, this, like, you'd be surprised. Like, a lot of people would be surprised at how technical, like, the actual run is. Like, there's a lot of, like, optimized yeah. stuff that you have to do. All right. This is going to be the hardest, like, skip to talk about. So, we're going to first put all the 10 10 members to one health that's because we're only gonna need to kill one to transition to the next phase but what's it called but they maintain the current health in this phase so all right so now we kill blue okay this isn't now this is the most important section that we're gonna okay so we're gonna start building a meter we're gonna get one bar for zoo and then we're gonna switch to mayday and try and get two bars here Okay, that flying factory has got to go. So you yeah, can see. <laughs> sorry. So you can see the health one on the top right. So the goal here is we want to kill the ten ten men members, and then we want our Marsac to hit Neon J. Oh. Oh. Please, please, please. Oh, that's oh, okay. Wow. All right. That's two. Okay, and now this is the most important part. I cannot get three combo hits here. The third hit is too slow, so I'm gonna keep repeating one and two. Wow. Oh, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, nice. Nice. You can see how stressful that can, that, how can, that can be a run killer. Wow. And now we're gonna switch to Zook for this last part. All right, good work. I think we're done here. So this just skipped earlier, an right? auto-scroll phase, so we skip immediately to this last part. Wow. That's... Wow. It 
It's a shame because you, you, there's such good music in this, but for, this, for the purpose of the speed run, we don't get to hear so much of it. Oh, okay. That's a good, that's yeah, a good wow. 10. That's a good 10 wow. right there. So, again, I can't explain a lot because I'm really trying to just do everything, but basically, what they did in the Encore Edition is for some reason, they've extended the hurt box of uh, ne or Neon J. Uh, for the last phase. So because we have the 7 hit upgrade and the finisher upgrade, Zeus combo at finisher can actually reach and hit uh, Neon there. And then as well as you saw at the end, I guess they kind of took the criticism that it's hard, too hard to parry during the, in the original game. So they just said, hey, let's just extend the entire like parry time and radius of the explosions. So we're able to manipulate, or not even manipulate, we're just able to take advantage of that. And we can just keep rolling around and just parry three times, which is three parry damages and just it fills up Mayday's uh, note counter. So yeah, that that was just the 10 cent skip, first try too. Nice, yeah. GG. That is a GG moment. Honestly, this run has been, it's been going pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, I, I'd, I, I'd I, say I so. could be on PB base. I don't have the, I only have the chat up, so I don't have the stream up. So I'm still, I don't want to know what my time is because I'm not going to try and get too worked up about it. So yeah. Yeah, someone else in chat just said, I know, I like how she's sad the whole fight. And it's great because, like, there, there's so much emotion that is dictated by the characters and the artwork. And it, it's it's really nice to see that kind of stuff with, with such a small team that um, Metronomic was when they made this game. I think there's only, like, a handful of people that made this game. Yeah, was, like, they're an indie studio, so, like, uh, like, like, I'll be honest. I feel people were being a bit too critical. Well, in a sense, they were being a bit too critical. Is the game good? Yes. It's not bad. Like, obviously, there's some few like things that don't work here and there, but for the amount of effort that they put into this, and for the like, they weren't even asking for triple A price. I I appreciate it for what the game is. So, you know, it's just one of those games that is just gonna stick with me for a while. So, yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Yeah. So right now we just got all uh, we fed Ellie for the fifth time. So this unlocks the fast travel station. So Ellie's actually our pilot for this. So it's gonna tell us, and we can move straight or er, left one more time, as you can see here. It's gonna give us the prompts. All right, there's gonna be two text boxes here. Okay, and now this will fly us directly to the next vinyl that we need to unlock the next place. Now, as much as easy as Eve is, Eve's fight is gonna go by really fast. But it's another stressful section, and I'm probably not going to talk during it because Eve's fight is just parry the game. You literally just parry the entire fight and just is all about timing and positioning. So it, I, remember I, in the, I remember in the early stages when we were working on this, that there was a whole discussion on the time signature of this to try to make it more, to try to help with getting all the parries done. Yeah, but also not only that, the original way you're intended to fight her is really annoying because um, she teleports whenever you get near her. So when we first played this game, we were like, how do you possibly optimize this fight? It's so garbage, but you know, I figured out like, wait, why is she throwing parryable objects? So we'll get to that later, but right now into the approach. So we're actually gonna, oh, Oh, please, please. Oh, no, unfortunate. I need to wait for the parries here. Oh, no, this is... Oh, my gosh. Wow, oh, I, re I oh. really messed this. I messed this part up really badly just because just I took that damage. So, while well, I'm supposed to do that, I'm supposed to get an early cycle where I get a... Uh... Wow, I'm really messing this up. I'm really sad now. <laughs> but uh, what's it called? <laughs> We're gonna get another double parry anyway, but it's just this part's really slow, just because you can see I have to wait three attacks for that parry. I didn't miss that during practice, but hey, go figure. So it happens. It happens. I could potentially still get PB here, just because I can probably afford a few mistakes, but that's probably one of the bigger ones. All right, so we need six notes for this upcoming section because we need to kill three bots. So we're gonna skip the black bot there, just because it takes too long to kill them. So we're gonna kill one of these fly bots here. And in the next room, we need to use all four of our notes in order to kill the next two bots. Also, I'm taking a ton of damage. So this is just cause I took so much in that first phase. So a lot is going wrong. <laughs> you're still doing good on your time. I won't Man, say what it is. I... Oh, that is so good, <laughs> dude. The RNG is getting to me now. Like that's really bad placement. <laughs> like the fact that I had to look for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so we don't need notes here. We're gonna skip all the way. Okay. We're gonna get to these bots and get a double parry here. There we go. That was what the first room was supposed to look like until I messed it up. <laughs> Alright. We're gonna skip the notes there because we don't need it. We only need two notes on Zook for and that we can get in this floor. There we, okay, that's better. Okay. And luckily we're gonna switch from Zook at the last phase. Which is the next one, isn't it? Yes, this is gonna yeah. the next one is the last room. Perfect. Alright. I'm making it up, making it up. Just not making any more mistakes. I never realized how like earthbound the background is until just now. It is a little funky for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It fits the vibe of Eve perfectly, but I never noticed how, like, how it is. <laughs> it is is definitely something. All the eyes, all the limbs, everything. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I'll mention now, I'm just going to be parrying. Just I can't explain much because I need to just focus on the position. But just know I'm going to do a combo. Position made in the middle, parry, and then combo again. All right. And then while Moist Rock over here is concentrating, getting all this taken care of, all this read a couple things. Do not forget that Summer Games Done Quick is coming up real soon. That's going to be June 26th through July 3rd. That's only a couple of days away. The prize submissions are open. You can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information. And hey, tweet us at, at gamesdonequick and let us know what you're excited for most about Summer Games Done Quick. And of course, speaking of events, we have Frame Fatales, they'll be having their next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, in late August. Type exclamation mark FF in chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more information. And, of course, we have our highlights channel on YouTube. It's a channel that features highlights of all the GDQ hotfix shows uh, and all sorts of stuff. Use the exclamation mark highlights command in Twitch to learn more about our highlights. And I was not expecting to get that to be done that fast. Yep. That's what an optimal <laughs> E fight should look like. I'm, I'm even like looking over. I'm, I'm looking at the side. I'm watching as well. I'm, I'm looking at all this stuff here, and I'm like, okay, they're here. We're gonna wait. How, wait already? You're done with the what? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So what happened there? So it's weird enough that the thing is the parryable projectiles in this game are always usually pink, but for some reason. I guess they just didn't texture it properly, or maybe they just, you know, reuse the asset. But all of the eyeballs that Eve shoots from those hands are all parryable. So the pattern there is always going to be the same. So it's always the same pattern. You just can't be near Eve when she attacks, otherwise she's going to teleport instead. But we always set her in death range, where if we parry a certain amount of time, so it's like four, um, like six or something. And then like, it's eight on May Day. I missed one, I missed one of them. So I only got seven. I had to parry one more time on Zook's section, which is technically a time loss, but it was so optimally done. So, pretty good fight. Pretty good fight. Yeah. Man. Eve has such, or Eve has such a such a tragic story. It is kind of, it is a little bit of a sad moment for sure. Yeah. But no emotions, just speed run. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No emotions, ah. just speed run. Hey, right, three, three, three. I'd say that's pretty decent. I think three thirty is technically what I would have gone if I didn't miss the eight note or eight pair on Mayday, but that's still very fine. Ah. And also, so this is where the next part changes in the last part of the run is that we are going to destroy Tatiana with the new mod that Ta or that Eve has provided us. So. Last here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna teleport. We're going to equip Burning Hair Fashion. That is the one that we're gonna use. It creates a, just a burning trail, Zoop dashes, and then the damage is scaled based on the combo hit. So we'll just Zoop jump cancel to the seventh hit. And then we are going to completely annihilate Tatiana's first two health bars. And then maybe if RNG is on our side, we will uh, get a fast end cycle. Oh, man. I'd like to see that. Also, my leg is dying, so it's just the way I position oh, my gosh. leg. Because I I cross my right leg underneath my left, just so I have a basically like a platform for me to hold my controller, but man, 
be in this position for too long, it's not good for my blood flow. <laughs> There's nothing else we need to do. Alright. Oh, okay, okay. We never didn't mention anything about the ghoulings. The ghoulings? Eh, they're just a they're just a band that just fade out of existence. Cause rock is dumb. I'm not trying to slander. I'm just saying what the game would say. <laughs> yeah, that is actually true. They like they actually do in the game very much say rock is, you know, it doesn't. It's it, it's out of it's out of phase. Oh, it's it, there's no need for it. The rock the rock people are boomers. Honestly, we're just the zoomers. Actually, wait, but we're Zoomers, though. We're, like, young people. But but, uh, but, don't you have rock in your name? You know, that's true. I'm a different kind of rock. <laughs> <sighs> all right. We're just getting all the way to the tower, and what a surprise. No straight roads yet. There's one straight road leading to Tatiana. Oh, what a shocker. <laughs> all right, yeah. here we go. All right. So, there's going to be an elevator, like, cutscene here. This is actually fine. Oh, fine in the sense that we can actually use this time to do the idol into meter gain. And normally in the previous run, I would switch between both Mayday and Zook so I could get them both full meter. But this is all going to be Zook right here for the most part. Um, I'm also going to explain part of the fight beforehand. There's going to be a cog that circles around the screen. So we can kill the cog in two cycles because it's going to move if we hit a damage threshold. We're going to hit six times with Zook. We're going to switch to Mayday. Do a full combo, do two first hit attacks, and then do a charge, and that ends the phase really fast. And as long as I don't mess up the first part, which is Zook, then um, I should have the optimal timing to um, get Taka on the same place, and then just do a lot of damage. Oh shoot, I just realized something. Oh no, not that one. Oh no. <laughs> all, all this talking, but I forgot to equip this. All right, we're good. Normally I should have done that when the, when the thing was loaded, but hey, honestly, this is what happens when you talk a lot. Normally, I would not be doing this much, so <laughs> it's fine. I just, just out, of, out, of, out of just random notes, I want that drum set. I want to be able to just spawn a drum set out of nothing. Bro, you'd be called you know, a witch. <laughs> it, would be, it would be sick, though. Just, just, wow. just sitting there bored and just spawn a small little, you know, couple digital pads that you can just start jamming on. This will be rocking 2050 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> This, this is definitely something to think about. All right. Here we go. That's the last of her speech. We should be full meter on Zook now. Okay. I actually need to concentrate on this part. I can't lose someone like you two are able to be my artist. Yes, sir. I brought order. All right. And while you're concentrating, I will let everyone know that don't forget, after this is going to be speed runs from the crypt. This is going to be a great show. I believe it's the Evil Within that's coming up. And that'll be coming up right after no straight roads so we got some great great stuff coming afterwards so plenty of stuff to stick around for oh wow yeah oh. that's what i guess there we go it's fine we have a backup but it just sucks because that's what happened i switched the zook too early there we go that's 56. I didn't know this, but they changed the background, too, for the artwork, the fan artwork. I'm so sad, because I'm just choking it now. That's fine. I think I should be able to kill Tatiana <laughs> here, though, but ooh, it's actually going to be kind of close. I think you got this. Yeah, we do. That's burning. That's the burning hair fast right there. Wow. Now it's fast, but I have to walk all the way back here. There we go. Their music is in a league of their own. We have That's fine. And oh, of yeah. Course, yeah, and of course, if you don't get that, if you don't finish that before the speech ends, it repeats the boss, that boss phase. Yeah, it could be a lot of people beginning, but also now we actually get to do some jump cancels and showcase some actual tech. There we go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, now we're going to pray that we get two, uh, two energy drinks here. If we don't, it's... it's uh, Nope. We, got two, we got two hamburgers. <laughs> it's great. Well, <laughs> well, that's fine. We just have to do... Yes, we just gotta do a bunch of jump cancels, but it's fine. That's just more of a more of a damage, or what's called, more of a skill check right there. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay, well. There we go. Just take more damage. Just we're gonna wait on the three here, because we're posi positioning ourselves right in front of Top Gun when she drops down. All right, here we go. 
You got this. There we go. Yeah, I told you. Whew, okay. Nice job. Yep, yep right. that was the last boss fight of the game, but there's still one last section, which it's mainly an auto scroller. You can optimize the time though, so you can only lose time instead of gain, which is fine. Just, just do, uh, just do whatever you need to do. But I'll explain when we get there. But yeah, goodbye, Tatiana. It really does suck that I messed up that finale because I really should have done that right. But that's what happens when you just count your chickens before you hatch. How about that? Yeah. I, mean, I just counted five instead of six, so I'm just dumb. So can't yeah. do anything about that. And that's that's it. That's our final boss, right? Yep. As I said, it's just easy. It just gets easier. The game goes on. Just just you know, it's all just front loaded. Yeah. And then at the end. I mean, technically speaking, I think the bosses are actually harder when you casually play it. But when you play in a speedrun like this, it's actually just so much easier. Because you find a bunch of exploits, you get all the upgrades, you get all these new tools. So, yeah. Plus, the benefit of casually playing it is that you actually get to listen to the music. But technically, yeah, if, you do the, yeah. uh, if you do the 100% version, then you will actually end up listening to like a majority of the songs. Because, as they imply, there's or 100% implies there's a hard and a crazy mode. So it increases the difficulty of the game or the bosses in particular, and then you need to do like all of, you need to do all the fights. So, big shocker! Turns out that uh, Cliff was actually evil the whole time. He just wants to take over Vinyl City, yeah, Vinyl City, and then turn into a rock empire. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna reimburse or empower the NSR artists that we beat up, and we're gonna go from uh, back to forward. So yeah. Or last to front. So we're gonna go through Eve, Ten Ten, Yinu, Sayu, and then DJ. So right now we just need to activate four like energy orbs that appear, and they're always gonna be a set pattern and always spawn in the same. Uh, always spawn in the same position. So for Eve, it's gonna be a diamond shape. So it goes from it's gonna be counterclockwise starting from the right. And so what you just what are you seeing right there? So I activated the prompt where where you get um what's it called when you activate all four of those, then you get the power of rock, and then the game checks if you have all four of those little orbs lit up. So that way it transitions into the next phase. But we can actually for some reason activate it earlier, activate the power of rock. In that time, we switch to the second character, and then we just we trigger the fourth one in between. Yeah, we trigger the fourth one as we're waiting for the animation. So each section we get to save around like two, two to three seconds. So right now, 10, 10 part. So it's gonna be a right triangle start from bottom left and it's gonna be clockwise. We're gonna kill this bot just cause we wanna get out of the way. Those bots can be annoying in this section. Yeah, the thing is in- See? Yep. So in the original game, <laughs> the bots attacks did not work for whatever reason, which was fine by everyone. We're yeah. like sick. Yeah. They, have, they don't have a hit. They don't have any hitboxes. This is great. And then they're like, yeah, quality of life changes. We fixed the hitboxes on the last part. Like, ah, I see. Yeah. I see. That's great. Uh, all right. Next is going to be Yunu section. So Yunu is going to be a counter clock. Yeah, counterclockwise direction. Sorry, from top right. And it's going to be a square. But we're actually going to activate the power of rock for the first one, just because we want to get the iframes from it. So, get ourselves in position. There we go. So there we go, avoid the attack here. All right, that was pretty good. And then that was good, yeah. Transitions over. That staging it, or that part in particular, can get really scuffed because, um. Sometimes the bots in between the, the left side of the screen, they'll sometimes block your air dash, which can get really annoying. So, but over there, like, I don't know. I just got really lucky because there's no bots that spawn on the left. So I got a straight line path. I got to the third one before it even spawned. And then that just allowed me to get to the fourth one faster. So not bad. Maybe like a 0.5 second like time save. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Sorry. We're going to do the exact same thing because we're just so close. So it's going to be a clockwise sir, or square starting from the bottom left. There we go. Okay. 
<clears throat> last one is going to be DJ's. DJ's is a... What do you call it? An hourglass shape? Start from the top right, bottom left, top left, bottom right. Yeah. Um, so I, I do notice that in, in these little auto scrolls here, you're at the bottom left. Does that and it have anything to do with making it faster? Is it so that you don't, uh, you know, is it just something <laughs> that just, we all do? Unfortunately, it does nothing. I just put it at the bottom left just because we're, honestly, I don't know what triggers anything. We don't put enough, we don't have enough knowledge to know like, if anything changes on that screen. You don't take any damage from hitting a rock. It's just all for show, honestly. Which is yeah. a little sad, but, you know. Oh, I'm gonna take damage here. That's fine. I just, uh, I just noticed that there's a lot of us that just always go down to the bottom left. Uh, I mean, honestly, instinctually, I, it makes sense, right? Danger comes from the yeah. top. Stay left, just because uh, we want to get to thing. All right, this is the last and most crucial part. This is where a 10 second time save or 10 second loss happens. So I'm gonna force Mayday to get stuck behind a light pole. I'm gonna switch to Zook. I'm gonna create enough distance in order for the auto like respawn to trigger. And I'm gonna try and trigger Mayday behind the invisible wall where the bots are. I have two attempts to do this. If I miss the first time, I get a, I get a minus five like second time save. So I'm gonna try and get this. I don't wanna do this, fellas, but you push my hand. Damn it, we don't have time to deal with good. And we got it. Nice. And yeah, all this right here. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> that was found by Zuka and Rex. It's freaking great. Yeah. And now we're just gonna rise up here. So time's gonna come up soon. I'm gonna skip. There's a cutscene here. Skipped. So time's gonna end on the last shock lock of bang. So I'll just say it when it's time. Go 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 go. Yeah. Down. Yeah. It's it gets glitched <laughs> just because of this. But honestly, at least it doesn't break the ending. Yeah. Nice. That's it. GG. Ah, uh, GGs. I would say it was a pretty decent run. There's definitely some improvements, but... Alright, I don't have the stream up. So, honestly, I am kind of worried if it's a sub-108, just because I want it to be more perfect. But I need to know, what is the time? Uh... I'll find out here in a second, but I think it was a sub-108. Oh, it was? Oh, I'm no. fairly certain uh, it was a sub like I have to play the game more. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm not happy that this might be world record, but but what was it? Look at that, man. Oh, wait, 10804. Okay, that is still world record though. That's a PB and world nice. record by 13 seconds. Nice. So Congrats. that does mean if I didn't mess up the Tatiana and the Eve approach, that would have been a sub 108. So I guess there's still room to improve on the run for sure. But that's it. That's no, that's no straight roads right there. Encore edition, to be exact. So of nice. course, I need to thank, I need to thank Midnight Vesper for helping us get this, uh, get this set up, and also I just want to thank the community and all of you guys for watching as well. Uh, I will say, if you're gonna buy the game, uh, hold off on it a bit, just because it did go on sale like a few months ago, and Steam Summer Sale is gonna come, like, come along soon. So I'll just wait till then. But yeah, wishlist it, wishlist yeah. it, wishlist it, wait for it. And then honestly, if you're interested in like this kind of stuff, maybe follow Metronomic because, you know, they're still working on the next game as well. So, yeah, that's no straight roads right there. And I think I heard that it's coming out in the. Oh, shoot, I just realized out. something. There's a copyright material. Oh, whoops. Okay. I need to stop. Okay. Oh. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, they will, they will copyright for you. That. So just, just, yeah, just mute that part when you're done. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry I didn't even catch that. No, okay. I just, I just really forgot. But yeah, okay, that's it. Okay, um, so if anyone, and I, I know you talked about it during the DK West, but if anyone was really interested in checking out more information about the game in terms of, you know, like, you know, I know a lot of people in here love the game that were watching it. Maybe now they're interested in learning about how to run an Encore Edition. I know you said it during DK West, but if someone came in at the, before that or after that, where would they go? All right, you're going to go into the speedruns.com. Just find No Straight Roads because we don't have it split between, uh, we don't have it as another title. We just have it as a category. And then you'll find a Discord link and then you can find it there. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. And if anyone wanted um, to know, to follow you, where would they go? Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's just The Moist Rock. Uh, I mainly do fighting game content, or content. So, 
Uh, been a little slow on the speed run, but yeah, this is like the main game I play. And then you can follow me on Twitch as well. Again, I don't stream that often, but I'll stream like Valorant or maybe I'll stream a speed run every now and then. So that's at the Moist Rock as well. All right. And uh, any other any other final shout outs you'd like to say? Um, obviously yourself. I mean, you're the host and also you're just uh, you're one of the runners. So yeah, also just, just follow our host. He's just a good runner as well and plays more games than me. So that's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll find it. If you join the Discord, you'll find everyone else I mentioned already. So they have their own like a lot of them have their own uh, Twitch channels as well. Taja, Zuka, uh, Rex. So yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Moist Rock, for showcasing this amazing music game. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, of course, uh, don't forget, from now until July 15th, GDQ's revenue from subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered after taxes will be donated by GDQ to Doctors Without Borders. Now, don't forget that while the bargain may be, may be closing its doors, for this time, we got speedruns from the crypt coming up next with the evil within. It's going to be a fantastic show starting at the top of the hour. So this is a great time for you to get up, get a little bit of a snack, use the restroom, get some water to constantly hydrate, dim those lights, get some popcorn and enjoy some really nice spoopy games on speedruns from the crypt. Thank you all so very much. If you're going to be at Summer Games Done Quick, I'll see you there.